Well, hello, everybody. Dick here, once again. This is Podcastrophe, episode eight. We are getting ever so close to that episode fabled, that fabled episode 10 that uh, my pod father, Nate Phillips, keeps referring to. Like they, He always says, um, podcasts, he can determine if they're going to be successful or not, whether they get to episode 10 or not. I mean, sure, some fall off after 10, but it's usually a good sign if you can get 10 episodes in. Apparently, I've, I've never had a goal. I've never had a goal with my podcast. I just wanted to do it. And have fun doing it. I don't I don't want to be the best. I just want to have fun. But today, today is a fun day. I have my good friend that I've known for ever so long. My friend Matt Wilcox. How are you today, Matt? I'm good. Hi, everyone. <sighs> you, you came all the way down here from Chicago. That I did. I came from Chicago. Moved there in February. From here. Yeah. And then decided, you know what? I'm going to move to Chicago. So I did. And how are you liking it up there? Uh, it's fun. It's a uh, hustle bustle. Busy, yeah. Busy. And, uh, you know, kind of everything that you hear about Chicago is true. <laughs> yeah. But uh, don't really see a lot of it. Like, you know, all the violence. I mean, mm-hmm. I've seen some weird shit. I'll be honest. Like, <laughs> yeah. I uh, We saw some pretty weird shit a couple weeks ago. Up well, there. Uh, one, one time I got into the uh, the subway. And there was a homeless gentleman who had thrown up in the car that I got in. He was sleeping with his ass hanging out in the chair. And I just had to sit across from him. And the only thing that went through my mind was, why in the hell did I pick this car to get into? Why couldn't it be the one in front of it or the one behind it? It had to be this one. Yes. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, other than that, Chicago's great. Ha <laughs> ha. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. I remember you saying you were moving up to Chicago. I was bummed. I was like, oh, I mean, I know we didn't really hang out much before that, but still, it's still always a bummer, like, knowing, like, someone that you could possibly hang out moves even farther away. Yeah, I mean, but well, now, we, didn't, we didn't hang out a lot, but, I mean, we still talked and everything. Holy shit, my voice just cracked. Yes, I'm going <laughs> through puberty again. Um, but, yeah, I mean, we didn't hang out, but we did. We had our lives. Shit, we're old. Yeah. We're old exactly. now. We are. Shit, we used to, we used to hang out, like, almost every day. At least every Wednesday. Yeah, at least every Wednesday. Good old Arby's <laughs> runs, man. Yeah, in high school, we Matt had the car. He was he was the he was the friend with the car. I so. was the designated driver. <clears throat> and uh, we would every well Arby's. It just opened up like I think our sophomore year of high school. Sophomore or junior, one of those two. It, it I, I, oh man, I think it was our junior year. I think it was. It, yeah. it, Arby's opens up in Delphi, where an empty Hardee's building had sat for like nearly <laughs> ten years. Yeah, like ten years. Hardee's was been gone, and this building just sat there. Yeah, it was just completely empty. Like huge parking lot, huge space, and like the basically the the um the west entrance to Delphi, I guess. It's, I guess you're coming from Lafayette. Yeah, you're That'd coming be the from South. I think <clears throat> would it be South entrance? No, because South is like Delphi, or Delphi, <laughs> <laughs> Delphi Community High School. I mean, <laughs> either way, it's it's coming it's Delphi. coming into Delphi. Yeah, and it's just like this big open empty space, and uh, so when that opened up, we just ate there a lot, like, and then we just stopped. Yeah, we just added another stop like halfway through our junior year. Maybe. Yeah, it was called Arby's Wednesday. We would go there, we'd eat, always ring the bell. Yeah. We sometimes like a, dress up too. Yeah, we had the pictures of like us in like stupid hats and other kind of shit uh-huh. like that. But uh I still have all those pictures too. I think you do, yeah. And then uh Yeah, we just randomly stopped and then what, like two years later? I have close... a whole oh my god. So I just pulled up my uh pictures folder and I have an entire album dedicated to Arby's Wednesdays. I mean we did go there a lot. Oh shit. Look up. Look how you look weird without facial hair. You, Why do I have a guitar? I don't know. That that was your guitar, and you just brought it to Arby's once. I can't even play guitar. <clears throat> and I wore my chemistry glasses. And there I am with a guitar and not being able to play it either. Yeah, Still, but at least you can st- play it somewhat now. Somewhat. Uh, oh, yeah. Here's me gargling some fucking curly fries. Whatever happened to that hoodie? I like that hoodie. <laughs> oh. Ringing the bell, man! You were skinny, dude. I'm like a hundred. I was pounds, skinny. I'm like a hundred pounds dude. heavier now, and like I'm at least eighty pounds heavier. Forty <laughs> stretch marks. 
minus. <laughs> oh my god, the pimp hat. The pimp hat, yes. I was Arby Pimp. Oh man. <laughs> and we had our coupons every fucking week too. Yep, good old coupons. <laughs> we would we would we we were hardcore about Arby's Wednesdays. We we couponed. We we supported the local Arby's franchise <laughs> heavily. I would yep. get popcorn chicken every week. What did they do? They ended up closing like <clears throat> what, like three years later? No, it was it was only a couple years ago. Was um, it only a couple years ago? Yeah, it was like 2014, 2015. Whereas this, these pictures, the all all the Arby's adventures we had were like in 2006, 2007, I believe. No, 2007. 2007, 2007. 2008. Something yeah, like that. that was our junior year, and oh, this is monocles. Oh, this is from the track day at monocles. Yep, that's track day at monocles. <laughs> Good old Zach and the Hannah. Hannah and uh, Andrew Martin. Uh, yeah. Is that Eddie in the background? <laughs> I think that is Eddie in the background. Oh, man, when we had to wear those stupid polo shirts. Was this the track? This was before thing? I worked there. Yeah. Was this a track thing I got yelled at by Damon? No, because I worked there at that time. Okay. Because I was back there, and Damon's That's like, hey, Brett. what the fuck are you doing back Brett here? Brett Rogers right here in this picture. I love Brett. He's good. bald now. He's, He's so good, bald now. He is bald, but you know what? He's a good dude. <laughs> he is he is a really good dude. I I may I may have ventured veered away from uh the whole Christianity thing, but and he's seems to have gone further down it, but hey, he's still uh, a cool yeah, dude. he actually just got a job as an associate pastor at his church. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah. So he was teaching, I think, at Frankfurt. Yeah. Um I don't know if it was Frankfurt. I know he was teaching somewhere. And he said, you know what, I just Found my true calling, and he was offered hey, the position. Awesome. It's like, hey, good for you, man. Kudos. That's my Randy Orton pose in the pimp hat. <laughs> oh, man, I remember. I, who the fuck? Yeah, I remember this guy. Who the fuck was he? Uh, William Jenkins, I think. Is oh, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. That's Sam, Emily Howard. That's Sam Laxon, isn't it? Didn't she work there? Uh, no, because Sam worked at Walman's. Oh, yeah. Unless I was... Was it just a random person? No, I remember it was Kara. Oh, uh, yeah, that Kara chick. She, was, she wanted us. <laughs> she wanted us bad. <laughs> then she found out that we were in high school, <laughs> and she was just like, oh, no. Isn't she, she wasn't, wasn't she like the same age as us? No, she was in. She was like 21. She was in college. Interesting. I don't know. I don't remember. We were attracting older women. Oh, um, here's some Hooters. Hooters. Massage <laughs> chair. This is supposed to be an animated GIF that I made, unless I still have it. No. I think you... It used to be an animated gift. Yeah. I had it. This was an animated gift. Oh, wait. Okay, hold on. Uh, no. The, this. <laughs> <laughs> For, oh, oh, here's here's the gift. So tiny. Back when I didn't know how to, like, make resolutions, different resolutions and stuff. Oh, yeah. There, there it is. The gift of that. you in the massage so chair. Much. And that's it. That's that's all. But old, yeah, it's so many good times. Good old Arby Wednesday. Yeah, I mean, didn't one Arby's Wednesday end up being us going to the mall and we got our lightsabers? Uh, I think it was because I think that was the it was like the Wednesday before Halloween. Mm hmm. And that was the Halloween that I had the lightsaber and I kept jumping off my roof at kids. <laughs> and that was a fun day because uh, so we go to the mall as usual. Mm -hmm. uh, and we That's what you do in Delphi. You yeah, it's, it's what you mall. go. You you don't do anything in Delphi. You just go to Lafayette and fucking hang out there. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, there's nothing in Delphi. No, I mean, there's a little bit more shit now. But back sorry, then, I'm drink of water. Mm. Back then, when we're in when we're in high school, yeah, we don't want to do anything there. When we're kids, it was awesome. We had playgrounds and shit. Yeah, but when you're a or teenager, we, or we'd go out like in the woods and you know fucking fight with, with sticks, fit, beat the shit out of each other with sticks. Yeah, yeah. it was great. We, we larped. <laughs> we larped before larping was even cool. Yeah. No, we went. To, okay, so we go to the mall, and we're just walking around the mall, doing our normal mall thing. Yep. You know, just walking laps, checking out stores, whatever. We see somebody. We see some chick standing outside of Spencer's, just. With two lightsabers, just swinging them around. I was like, "Dude, that's awesome!" They're like, "Yeah, we're so, we're trying to get rid of them." But see, that's not how I remember it. I remember we wanted lightsabers and we couldn't find them. We checked like Toys R Us, yeah, and like a couple other stores, and we couldn't find them. And while we're walking around the mall, we saw these people that had them. Oh no, 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 no! No, that was a different day. I really? have that on video. Okay, I have that on video. Actually, it's the day we were looking for lightsabers, but just like the normal, like flipping out one, like the ones that just extend. See, I don't remember that. 
They, but either way, remember, like, it was, it was you, me, and Justin, we, and he was like, we're looking for lightsabers! Yeah, we need a lightsaber! <laughs> like, he was doing that shit all and then, through the And then the, the Link, the Link yell. Yeah. <laughs> was that the same day he tried to do a front flip off the stairs and just landed on his face? Oh, I don't know. I don't think so. Because wow, I remember that, and it was hilarious. He like, had that group of girls in front of us, and he <laughs> wanted to impress them. And he's like, check this out. And he went for a front flip, and it just like... It went horribly wrong. He just dove out and landed square in his face. Yeah. Then he got up and he did a front flip. It was a really good front flip, but it was too late. You know, he could not save face. <laughs> Literally. And, <laughs> <laughs> and the girls were like, yeah, cool. And then they just walked by and he just was so sad the rest of the day. <laughs> As any of us probably. Yeah, would be. I, was, I said, "Hey, man, it was a good." I mean, I don't know. You, you seem like you would probably be like, "Eh, fuck it." <laughs> I <Yeah>. tried. <laughs> I did my best, coach. <laughs> did my best. <laughs> but That's yeah, no, we can... got we got the lightsabers at Spencer's in the mall. Yeah, and they sold it to us for like forty bucks. Yeah. with batteries included. Yeah, they dude, like, they gave us brand new batteries. That was like a third of what the price said on the tag. Uh huh. Those, those, yeah, those it was the Force Effects lightsabers. Yeah, and that was back when they were like one hundred twenty bucks. Yep. And they're like, yeah, we're we're just trying to get rid of them. There are open box items, and we're just trying to get rid of them for so forty. So you get one, and we walk away, and you're just walking around with the lightsaber, yep. and we get all the way back. This is when Spencer's was at the other end of the mall. Yep. And we get all the way down by Hot Topic, and I just, I'm like, fuck it, fuck it, I'll get one too. <laughs> So I went. We went back. I had to turn all the way around just so Blaine could go get the lightsaber that yeah. I had. Yeah, we we both had Darth Vader lightsabers. Yep. We fought that night with them. Yeah, I remember, I remember that. But we were like, "It's on tonight." <laughs> and then, so you drop me off. I I hang out. Whatever. Um, Justin picks me up, and we drive over to your place. And I, and and this is so uncharacteristic and uncharacteristic of me. I fucking. Open the door mid drive. I was always a very safe person. I didn't safe passenger. God damn it. <laughs> I, I never did anything like risky. <clears throat> and uh, so I open up the passenger door and I am hanging out the side just waiting. to. And you're, you're already in the yard, like waiting for me. And I am like hanging out the passenger side and here you come running to the road. Cause you see me <laughs> and I jump out, like doing, getting ready to do like a downward slash with my lightsaber. And you just baseball swing directly into my stomach and just knock every ounce of air out of my body. Dude, I fucking hit the <laughs> shit out of you. <laughs> like, I pulled back and I cocked my leg. Into yeah. It. Like, <clears throat> if I would have been in baseball, you best believe that's a 450-foot homer. Yes. <laughs> MLB style. You knocked the shit out of me. And you dropped. And, and I did. I considered myself the victor. You pretty much were yep yeah i mean from that yeah i mean from a visual standpoint i feel like an outsider looking on that fight goes that guy won that guy lost clearly (laughs) so (laughs) and um (laughs) and and, uh, those lightsabers are so goddamn sturdy Mm -hmm. i mean for you to be able to do that like yeah felipe actually uh last year at halloween he went as a jedi and we went to the neon cactus and he his lightsaber was taken by some drunk dude and like Felipe was watching him the drunk guy like flung it dropped it and cracked it all the way down uh, and Felipe was so mad and I'm like dude what'd you expect the yeah, guy is yeah. fucking hammered like that was also a night at the cactus I saw a guy attempt to do a backflip didn't work landed on his face blood all over the neon cactus dance floor and I was like dude that guy's blood awesome. on the dance floor yeah it's like Michael Jackson it's like that really shitty band or Michael Jackson. Or Michael Jackson. I'm, I'm, I like Michael Jackson. <laughs> I, I like really shitty. I don't like that band. <laughs> I don't like that band. I don't like I, that band they, at all. they were playing here at the Lafayette Theater, I think last year, the year before. And of course, I did my normal Facebook talking shit, <laughs> not expecting like the actual band members to get on there and look. Did and their, their drummer got on there and was like, oh, you're so cool, dude. I'm like, I know. <laughs> I, I am cool, dude. And like, we just kept going back and forth. And like, it was just like this really non-aggressive it was like the super passive aggressive fight <laughs> like where he's he's the no it was a chick it was a chick drummer they they're like one of those bands that just have fill-ins like non-stop yeah and uh like she just kept fucking like oh yeah you're so fucking cool like thinking i was like yeah i know and, like we just kept offhandedly 
bullshitting with each other. <laughs> never got never got to a point where like, fuck you, your band sucks or some shit. Like, fuck you, you're just a stupid fucking asshole on the internet. <laughs> I am. Yeah. You've been accused of that since fucking sophomore year of high school. Oh yes. <laughs> but uh <laughs> back in back in the MySpace days. Do you, do you know how many fights I got in with people at Jeff High School on MySpace? Maybe not even MySpace, <clears throat> like Bebo. I don't remember getting any fights on if anybody remembers at a time when there were multiple social media sites. I remember Zanga. You remember Zanga? I do. Uh, I never had one, but social, I, I remember was it it. Social Cities or whatever on Yahoo. Uh, I don't remember. I remember <clears> – <throat> this is what I remember though especially. I remember everybody telling me that – what is it called? Like Google Plus? Oh, yeah. was going to be like the next like Facebook. It was going to put Facebook out of business. And, and then like never nobody did. Has... I used it. I used it. Some people used it. But I mean I have one, but I think you have to have one now for a Google account. Yeah, it automatically gives you one. Yeah, so um but yeah, Bebo. Wow. That's like that's like children's MySpace. Yeah. So it was like I started off with Bebo and then I moved to MySpace. And then I found out you could change your backgrounds and shit on MySpace. So I did that, you know, I had all the songs playing. I think I think my song for the longest time was fucking uh, Wait and Bleed by Slipknot. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, after that, people were like, Facebook, you should join Facebook. I joined Facebook, and I was like, dude, this sucks. And then Yeah, I didn't even want a Facebook. My I, aunt signed me up for mine. I didn't want a Facebook either. And then <clears> like, <throat> everybody made me get it when I worked at Camp Tecumseh. And they were just like, hey, you know, I get a Facebook. And I got it, and then now Facebook – is the consumes, only thing consumes all. Yeah, it's it's literally <laughs> the only way you can get a hold of somebody anymore, unless you have their direct contact information. But how many of us fucking have that shit? Honestly, nobody anymore. Nobody What's remembers it? phone numbers anymore. Uh, self- I don't. I, the only person's phone number I remember, besides my like old home phone number, is my fiance's. I remember my old phone number, my old home phone number. I remember Andy's old phone number, both <laughs> his dad and his mom's. Um, I remember my grandma. I know my grandma's phone number and her cell phone number. Mm-hmm. And that's it. Yeah, dude, my I, dad's cell phone number. I don't remember any of those numbers. Like, I can't tell you my best friend's phone number. I, I, you're just a name in my in my address book. Exactly. And I hit it, and it gives me an option: call or text. And that's all I do. Yep. And sometimes I'm just like, yeah, I'm not going to talk to Matt. I mean, that's understandable. <laughs> that's understandable. And then we have this this amazing thing called Snapchat. Oh, the w- Snapchat. Where we can just send pics of each other taking shits, you know? It's great. This That's literally <laughs> the only purpose of Snapchat, I feel like. I mean, a lot of people think it's for sexting, but it's really for dudes to just be like, hey, I'm taking a shit. Listen, I could see the sexting argument, but I'm not fucking 19 years old anymore. Yes. When I was 19, I was like... Yeah, show me your tits. Ah, no. All right. And now I don't do that. Now I'm just like, who do I Snapchat? Felipe. That's pretty much it. <laughs> and sometimes Kristen, but I live with Kristen and she's at, with me 24 seven. So I don't really need to talk to her when she's not around. Do you have any streaks? No, I have. I have five streaks right now. One of my streaks died the other day and I'm so sorry for that. Kind of. <laughs> um, but yeah, I got I got a streak, a streak with my girlfriend, a streak with my friend Rachel, Caitlin, Austin Welch, and Scott. Yeah, see, I don't, I don't Snapchat people. Like if they Snapchat me and I notice it's like the same one on their story, I'm just like, you piece. Of oh shit. yeah, uh, people complain to me about that all the time. But at the same time, it's like I want the story there, but I also want specific people to see it. Mm-hmm. So and you can't guarantee that if you're putting it in a story. Yeah, I just half the time I don't even respond to people that Snapchat me. They send me one and I'm just like, unless I can tell it's directly towards me, like if yeah. they're asking me something specific, or if it's like just something specific at me, I'll respond. But if it's just like, don't you hate it when like you're in the parking lot and then like geese attack you? Like I don't respond <laughs> to that. It's I'm like, why do I care about these geese attacking you? Yeah. It's not, they're not attacking well, me. No, they're not attacking me. No, they just want sympathy. Exactly. <laughs> Ooh, a goose attack. <laughs> I'm a little goose. Ooh. Boo, 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 boo. Ooh. Uh, I, I actually, after having Snapchat for, I think, five years-ish, um, I finally, this year, finally received my first unsolicited boobs. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. 
I don't think I ever had any unsolicited business. I'm not an attractive man, though. You, I'm... sir. Oh. Great bone structure. Why, thank you. Why, thank you. You got a magnificent beard. Thank you. I haven't trimmed my neck beard in a while, though, so it's kind of gross. Yeah, right now. I, hate, I can't stand when my neck gets that long. Yeah. It gets bad. No, so, okay, so unsolicited boobs. Story begins a year ago at the Doom Room. Cool. I'm not going to say names. I won't know them anyway. You wouldn't know it, but <laughs> if, uh, people listening might. Yeah. Actually, that's also very doubtful as well, but regardless, <laughs> I'm a cool dude, so I'm not going to say that. So last year, I dressed up for the Doom Room's uh, July 4th or 4th of July field day thing. I wore camo shorts, uh, American flag uh, belt. I wore an American flag like fucking uh, sleeveless T-shirt, and I had American flag fanny pack and American flag fucking beer belt. Dude, I was fucking. Patriot. I was ready to drink. And Dude, you should have been be in a NASCAR infield. I should have. I should have. Exactly. So I'm walking around like this all fucking day, and later on in the night, the night the night is basically almost over. It's like one or two in the morning and um yeah so there's this girl we're all sitting in the living room and there's this girl she's like oh my god i want your fanny pack like what what do i have how much do you want for your fanny pack i'm like it's not for sale you can't put a price on a good fanny pack <laughs> <laughs> and she's like she's like oh my god what do i have to do what do i have to do i'm like i don't I don't know. Like, I'm not even thinking. I'm not even thinking about any because that's just I don't. My mind doesn't go to there. Like, I don't think. Oh, show me your fucking tits. But it's my fanny pack. <laughs> no, I'm just thinking. I'm just thinking. No, it's it's my fanny pack. I'm not giving it to you. It's mine. Yeah. Exactly. And she's like, "Well, what if I flash you?" I'm like, "Oh." <laughs> the tables have turned. <laughs> but gosh, she's got a power over me. And then so she, I was like, I mean, possibly. I don't know. I mean, and she's like. Well, I can't flash you. I, I, I'm in a commit. I'm, I think she said she was like engaged or something. Maybe had a boyfriend. And then so she starts talking to her friend. Mm -hmm. Who is much more attractive. <laughs> <laughs> keep that. Keep in mind, I'm saying all this while I have a girlfriend right now. So this is in the past. Yeah, no, exactly. Hopefully my girlfriend understands, which I'm sure she will. She's really fucking cool. Um, she turns to her friend. She's like, so they start doing their normal, like looking at each other, like making hand gestures, talking really quietly to each other, even though I'm two feet in front of them. <laughs> chicks. Yep. <laughs> Hashtag chicks. Hashtag chicks. Um, and so she's like, well, what if my friend flashes you? I'm like, I just want to see some tits. Like, just show me some tits and I'll give you a fucking fanny pack. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a fucking weird ass girl <laughs> gone wild, like reward. <laughs> Show me some tension, get a fame. Yeah, here you go. So, of course, she she plops them out. I'm like, oh, those those are rather nice. Yeah, you get a fanny pack. You, <laughs> you get, get a, a fanny, fanny pack. pack. So I gave her the fanny pack, and then of course everybody else is like, well, let's see him again. <laughs> like, ah, everybody's freaking out. Like, and. I kind of gave up on it. I was like, cool. I saw my tits. I, I saw her tits. I'm, I'm good. happy, man. <laughs> I'm, I'm good to go. Uh, maybe I can take this. I was single at the time, so I was like, maybe I can take this step further. Nothing ever happened. I didn't really try either. Um, fast forward a year. I have her on Snapchat. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we added each other on Facebook. She posted her Snapchat. I added her at some point. Never really snapped her or talked to her, but had her on there. And uh, out of nowhere... She sends me like a fucking snap, like where she's like covering herself up. Yeah. Like, it, but I was like, that's weird. Like, out of just out of nowhere. This is a couple months ago. This is like out of fucking nowhere. Just sends me that, like covering her, covering up her chest, but like saying good morning or some shit like that. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> and I'm at work. I'm I'm literally online at work, and she she sends me this. I'm like, actually, I wasn't even online. I was checking. I was training somebody. And I was up when you train somebody there, you, after a certain point, you let them do their own, you let them, you leave them on their own and you go ahead so you can check their quality elsewhere. Yep. So that, that way you're not hovering over them. So I was elsewhere checking their quality with my buddy Joe. And, uh, he, I was like, Whoa, shit. He's like, what? I was like, I was like, this chick just basically sent me a topless picture of herself. She's covering herself up. He's like, Whoa, really? I'm like, yeah, I'm going to respond. <laughs> So I responded. I said, hey, haven't seen those in a while. <laughs> nice. 
Nice. Yeah, like it's, that's just me. I'm I'm sorry. I'm an asshole like that. Yeah, that's been a while since I saw those. Ha. So, I get a response. <laughs> that sounds amazing. And I literally look at Joe. I was like, "Hey, she responded." He's like, "Oh yeah." I was like, "Let's see what she said." And by golly, <laughs> <laughs> she responded with like just full blown chest picture. I was like, "Yeah." And he he does he flipped his shit. He's like, it's like, he he's one of those guys, and uh, he's been on he's been on one of the podcasts here on Journey into Comics before uh, Journey into Wrestling, I believe. Um, Dope. Uh, yeah, he's he's been the he's been the topic of many uh, episodes as well. <laughs> he's he's a character, and his life is also a character. <laughs> we'll get into that at a later date. But uh, to be continued, he he's one of those guys. It's like he he doesn't exactly get with the most attractive people, but he's attracted to them. Okay. He has super low standards. <laughs> um, so he would, he'd always be like, he'll always tell me like, Oh yeah, she's really good. Look, and she's really good. I'm like, Oh, right on dude. Right on. And then he'll be like, Oh, she's got a sweet rack. She's got a really nice rack. She's got nice boobs. I'm like, okay, cool. And I'm a boob guy. Yep. I remember <laughs> I'm a boob guy. So, uh, of course, like I was like, well, let's see a picture of her. And he'll show me. And it's like this, larger chick i'm not i'm gonna be pc about it it's this larger chick with of course ginormous boobs because she's not small yeah and i'm like i'm like oh whatever <laughs> I, I i i always like i'm why do i fall for this I'm every point, time <laughs> i'm to the point with him where i'm just like i i don't sugarcoat anything anymore my fuse is just gone <laughs> and i'm just like ah fuck <laughs> like, that's not those aren't nice <laughs> He's like, what? What are you fucking talking about? They're huge. I was like, there's a difference between huge boobs and nice boobs. Look at that, man. They're at her fucking belly button. I was like, uh, I'm not gonna get into it. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna dip my. I'm not gonna dip my feet into the shallow end of my life. Yeah. <laughs> but and he, he'll he get he'll get upset about it, and I'm like, well, fucking Jesus Christ, have some fucking respect for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, but it's like I'm a boob guy, so. And so nice boobs to me don't necessarily mean big. They can be rather small as long as they're like perky, nice, nice shape, you know, symmetrical. And so back to the, back to the story, I get the snap and he just happens to be what I, I literally held the phone so we could both see what she sent. Mm -hmm. I had no idea what she was going to send. Yeah. She sends me this topless picture and I'm like, hell yeah. <laughs> both him and I are just like yelling in victory. <laughs> <laughs> like He's like, oh my God. <laughs> he's he's like, he's like oh my god and um so he i was like see joe that's what nice boobs look like oh <laughs> uh, good old her and I, I think her and i continued to chat while she was topless for like another hour i think i mean not like they're just hanging out but she was like topless still yeah anyway so that that's Some my of the first best conversations i've had have been with topless people you're right should we take our tops off? If you want to. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> be honest. You... I, I feel like if Andy came home, he'd be like, what the fuck are you guys doing? He can judge us all he wants. In his eyes, only God can judge us. I'll sit on him. You'd probably, you'd probably crush him. He hasn't, worked, he hasn't worked out in forever. Dude, I'm... He has like no muscle mass whatsoever. I have 230 anymore. pounds of solid man meat, and Papa Bear is very voluptuous <laughs> i'm i'm getting there like this week i haven't been, I've, i went to the gym once this week and i've eaten like shit all week uh i was gonna keep going but then like i was just too tired my, my schedule's been kind of off whack having this having girlfriend duties now yeah uh, but uh like, went to the gym once this year <laughs> i was gonna go today cool <laughs> i was gonna go today but then i decided no i'm just gonna go get little caesar's pizza and Sounds uh, like playing, start man. start fresh on Monday. <laughs> Good old case of the Mondays. Can never go wrong with those. I'm yeah. always gonna start on Monday. When I this is me when I say I'm gonna start on Monday. It hit, hits Monday and I'm like, oh, let's, let's eat. I'm, I'll, I'll start tomorrow. Hits Tuesday. I'm just like, it's not Monday. I gotta wait till next week now. <laughs> 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 and it's just a bad case of that Monday crap. See, for me, Monday is my back day, and I hate back day. I love back day. I hate back day. So like. The way and it's kind of it's kind of a weird way of thinking. So like I'm more motivated to go there because I know I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. Yeah. So it's like, 
I'm going there. I don't want to do it, so I'm not going to spend time, spend a whole lot of time. Therefore, it's easier for me to go there because I know I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. Mm-hmm. I should though, because back your back's really an, an important muscle group. It's, it's important to have that. I just when I was weightlifting really hard, this was when I was going to Purdue still. I just I would do legs and back twice a week, and then I'd do um, like chest and triceps, back and biceps. Then I'd go with, uh, you know, squats and, you know, legs. But, like, I was I was lifting heavy weight. Mm-hmm. And eventually my, my shit just shut out. I was done. I was like, oh, my God, I'm so tired. I went on vacation, came back, and I was just exhausted. Yeah. Like my body had given up. And then I tried to get back into it. My shoulder just felt like it was coming out of socket every time I went to lift. Yeah, my shoulder's always been my weakness, so I, it's I like, try to focus on that now. It's like, it's, I was watching some channel on YouTube, I don't know, some physical therapy channel, and it was called like the Wien Scalpula, Scalpula? Yeah, whatever the fucking word is. And then, yeah, like, just when I go to the doctor, like, oh, it's too nice, you need to give it a rest. It's like, I haven't done anything for like a year. I go work out one time, hurts again. So if you're telling me to rest it, I have. Yeah. But I don't know. I just lost all my motivation when it comes to like working out. And then I look at myself in the mirror. I'm like, God, I'm a piece of shit. (laughs) I'm disgusting. I make myself sick. And like, then I go eat stuff. (laughs) I eat. I'm unhappy because I eat. (laughs) Basically the fat bastard thing. I eat because I'm unhappy. (laughs) It's a vicious, vicious cycle. You notice that fat bastard is the exact same voice as Shrek from trick i did notice that it's like michael myers just recycles the same voices over and over again not to say it's oh, a bad man. thing i, I thought but... you were going a completely different direction with that i thought no. you were gonna say like do you ever notice that like all the characters in austin powers look exactly the same like it's like they're played by the same <laughs> guy and I, you're like do you ever notice he has the same voice as shrek <laughs> like that's crazy well uh <laughs> no <laughs> <laughs> but now that you mention it, it's kind of crazy huh yeah yeah but uh yeah i was i always thought about that i'm like Fat bastard is Shrek. They're both giant ogres. I never, I never even thought of that. I definitely didn't think of that. So, but yeah, I don't know why that came up, but whatever. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I have an issue with my shoulders every time I work out. Not every time I work out, but uh, I think it's just it's from bad form doing shoulder exercises because I will fuck up my shoulder if I put too much weight on it because yeah. from wrong form, and then I won't be able to do anything for two weeks. I used to have bad form on like everything. And it's usually remember... right in like my front delt. Mm-hmm. Um, that's where I fuck it up. I'll do, I'll fuck it up either doing like uh, arm press, like shoulder press, or uh, incline bench press. Incline bench sucks. Yeah. Upper chest, man. That just it sucks. But uh, I remember like when I started actually having like the shoulder issues, I was. I was like, why am I having these shoulder issues? So I was like, I need to work my form. So I dropped all my heavy weight. And I'm like, okay, I'm just going to work on reps, lightweight, high reps, just to work on form. And I watched my form like crazy. And I was doing really well with it. Then I was like, all right, time to start bumping back up to heavy. And I was lifting heavier weight than I ever had in my life. And uh, I was feeling pretty good. I was looking pretty, pretty stout. Mm-hmm. And then, again, just... Lost all motivation, man. Like, I just, I hate cardio. <laughs> yeah, I, I do too. I, I don't do it. I hate cardio. I hate, like, I like lifting, but, like, I want to have a partner there to do it with. Or if I'm going to do it, I want to be there alone. Yeah. Like, no, nobody else in the gym or not with anybody? Nobody else in, like, the gym. Oh, fuck. I, that's impossible. Sometimes. Yeah, exactly. Especially where I live now. So it's like, I just have a lack of motivation to even start again. Yeah. And I don't like to do like body weight exercises and shit like that. Like I've gotten pretty good at those. Oh, well, and ter- for like leg, my leg days, I do a lot of body, body weight. Oh, really? See, like, cause I'm not trying to build my legs. I'm just trying to maintain. When it comes to squats, I, I want to rap. squats, squats, I'll put weight on, but everything else, uh, I just maybe some, like a couple dumbbells, mm-hmm. like 20 pound dumbbells. And all like good. when it, when it comes to, like squats and donkey press. Or leg press, whatever you yeah, want to call it. I usually call it leg press. I like to do single leg 
it's for leg press or dead. And then squats, I'm just like, load that bitch up. Yeah. And then we load it up, go down, make sure you go past 90 degrees, or you have the stool where you sit your ass down, pause, then you go back mm-hmm. up. Because pause reps are nasty. I don't know if you've ever done pause reps. They're fucking terrible. They hurt. They make you want to cry. And then you <laughs> cuss the entire time. Yeah. And afterwards, Language. you're like, I feel jacked beyond belief. Language. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm so glad I got into working out, though. Because, I mean, you, you remember me. Yeah. I was I was a twig. You was a wee little baby. I was a wee little baby. I was I was a twig. I mean, I think I weighed 118 graduating high school ish around there. I mean, weighed 140. I weigh I, I haven't weighed myself since May, so I'm 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 around like 175, 180. Maybe if I could get down to that, I would be so happy. I'd be jacked. <laughs> yeah, I'd be huge. Like if I could eat right. Okay, so it's a combination of eating right and eating enough. I suck at both, so I look like shit. I I don't look nearly as ripped as how much I go work out. Yeah, <laughs> but like I get I get compliments all the time. Like, dude, you're so fucking jacked. And I'm like, I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, hell, like you look a lot better than what you did. Yeah, like, I was I was a twig. I, was I just I, I saw like pictures comparing you like on Facebook the other day, and I was like, you know what, man, kudos to Blaine. Dude, like he's 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 worked hard for his games, man, and it's it shows. And proud of that, man. Good uh, good job. Thank Round of applause. Sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah. And then I got all this shit going on this podcast. It's so fun. Yeah, it's so fun. And I never would have thought I'd be doing this. Like back in high school, like I always loved doing media type things. Yeah. And of course, I had the videos that I did yep. on YouTube, like the po- my first ever podcast. And then the, <laughs> the oh man, uh, I, I, I'm, if I remember, I have a hard drive somewhere with a bunch of the videos that we used to do. Yep. I remember oh. some of those videos. What was that? What was that going to be called? Like, I don't know. Do we have like a thing for, it was just Matt and Blaine. I know you and <laughs> Justin were going to do something. Yeah. Like we that. had the boys from eight, eight sixteen. Yeah. And there's a couple of videos on YouTube of that up. And then, which, I mean, actually, if you look at it, it's kind of like, although we didn't think about it at the time, like, I thought about that with you guys a long time ago, and that's kind of led into, like, the roommate stuff that yeah. me and Felipe do now. Yeah, because I, I, I was about, to, I was actually going to use all this to segue into that. Very Kudos. nice. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so you have, you have your YouTube channel, Innator yes, I do. Zim. Innator Zim, uh, good old YouTube <laughs> Please channel. tell me about this Innator thing. Okay, so, well... <laughs> My cousin. Let's, let's uh, travel back to high school. Yeah, this again. again. This is a high school thing, and Halo Three was the big deal, and you know everybody, nobody wanted to pay for the Xbox Live subscription, you know, so everybody just kept making new email addresses to get the whole free month. Yeah. And one time I was with my cousin because we would get off work and go play Halo straight through the weekend, like no sleep. I remember your first your first uh, Xbox Live gamer tag. What, what was that? The Abe Lincoln one. Abe Lincoln five nine one. Yeah, Abe Lincoln five nine one. But uh, Jesus. oh my God, Abe Lincoln killed me. Yeah, Abe Lincoln killed you. That Abe Lincoln's a dick. Yeah, dude, <laughs> fucking asshole. How dare he? But yeah, I was with my cousin Zach, and he's going to make me a new gamer tag, and he wants to spell Invader Zim, and his dumbass forgot the V. And because I kept telling him, like, dude, it's not going to be available. Like, why would an Invader Zim be available? And he's like, well, I don't know. We'll just see. And he's like, holy shit, it's available. And as I'm playing with it, I start getting people like laughing through the mic at us. And they're like, hey, Jackass, you spelled it wrong. And I'm like, the hell are you talking about? What are these people talking about, Zach? And I finally look at the name. And I'm like, you forgot <laughs> the V, dude. And he's like, oh, sorry. He's like, it kind of works, though, because he's like, you know, a grenade, a nade, a nade, and then you're just Zim. And I'm like, that's stupid. (laughs) That's dumb. (laughs) But I I just kept rolling with it. And, I mean, it's like, it's my name for, like, absolutely everything as far as, like, like gamer tags, PSNs, Mm -hmm. my shit on Steam. Like, everything. I'm just like, eh, it's a nade or Zim. Yeah. I've tried to brand it a little bit. I've tried to make my logos match the kind of invader zim yeah animation style and 
I, I do the Photoshop thing with it, and I don't know, but yeah, that's that's how it started. Then I came up with the YouTube channel, and I try to post some videos every once in a while, and then my my favorite videos I post because I I do some let's plays, and I want to start doing some new ones because I just got some new software. Yeah, but because I want to do a Nuzlocke challenge, that's what I really want to do. What's I wanna, that? So I want to do a Pokemon Nuzlocke challenge, where everything's random. So you get a random starter Pokemon. All encounters are random. All gym leader Pokemon are random. Everything's just random. And when you're po- like you're only allowed to catch the first Pokemon you encounter in an area. So like, I walk into a new area and let's say I see a Zubat, I have to catch that Zubat or I have to kill it. And then the next encounter, let's say it's a Mewtwo, I'm not allowed to catch. Oh wow. Yeah. And so and then also if you have a Pokemon faint, it's considered dead, and you have to deposit it. You cannot oh, use wow. it the rest of the ma- rest of the game. And when you black out, you're done. It's over. Or you, if you still have a usable Pokemon, like in your PC, yeah, you're good. But like, once you don't have any Pokemon available, GG, it's over. Oh wow! So I want to do a, I want to do a Nuzlocke. Now is this through like some kind of like? It's a... through an emulator. Okay. Like I have a, I have an emulator on for uh, several Pokemon games and. uh I think I'm gonna try it on Crystal. I was gonna say I was about to ask which uh, which uh, generation you're yeah. gonna go with. I I'm a, I'm a generation one boy. That's that's where you and I started. Yeah, because you course. had red version. I think. I had, no, I had yellow. Did I started with yellow and silver at the same time? Oh, did you? I thought you had red. No. Andy had red. Andy had red. Andy had red. I had blue version. And then yeah, you had yellow. And then I remember I had both gold and silver. That's the nice thing about being an only child. Your parents are like, oh, yeah, I yes. both. <laughs> so, um, but I'm <clears throat> probably going to do it with either Gen 1, Gen 2. Um, but, yeah, I just started making Let's Plays, and then eventually we, me and my buddy uh, Felipe, who also lives in Chicago, we started doing this little mini-series called Roommates, and yeah. we just do some random stuff on that. And, and so far, people seem to like it. It's is quite humorous well thank you i i watch those videos and i just can't help but think back to the videos we made and it's like all, it's all there yeah exactly. it's all there like the same humor <laughs> plus felipe yeah plus felipe like felipe the way like we describe our characters because we're, we're trying to make it be like real to us yeah but it's a little bit more exaggerated and felipe describes me as being the ron swanson of, <laughs> yeah. the, of the show and i'm like i can i can rock with that i love ronald yeah. swanson give me all the bacon and the eggs and i mean all the eggs and the bacon <laughs> but uh i believe you i believe you misheard me <laughs> <laughs> i i said i want all of the bacon and eggs yeah i i i, I want to be that ron swanson character so we try to play our roles but eventually we want to kind of branch out and we want it to catch up like we want it to be like a fairly decent set thing I'll go pitch this to NBC if I want yeah, to. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, uh, oh, by the way, I have a role for you in a future episode, hopefully. Okay. And I'll, I'll just give you a hint. Uh, brutal Burrito. Oh, shit. <laughs> so, Literally, it sounds like. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that's that's the hint. That's uh, It's going to be probably distant future. Okay. But uh, we want to do an episode with that. And then... Yeah, we just we have a fun time doing these things. Uh, the most recent episode, Felipe thinks he gets superpowers, <laughs> and it's it's filmed in a kind of mockumentary style, like the the office yeah. and parks, and yeah, we just <laughs> put it together. I dug that because like every, uh, Cesar, he, he he also guessed in the video. Yeah, Cesar uh, guessed in this one, and he's just like. He's not that fast. Yeah, we he's we not made that fast. Cesar. If you don't know Cesar, Cesar is a Big fan of the Flash. Yes, like loves DC Comics, but he loves the Flash, and so we wanted to incorporate that into this video. And so we, I just told him, I was like, "Listen, every chance you get, you're just gonna be like, I don't, I don't understand why he's so, why he thinks he's so fast. I want you, I want him to basically be obsessed with the fact that Felipe is supposed to be <laughs> super fast, and he just can't get over it. And and Felipe is like retardedly slow. Felipe is just <laughs> ridiculous. Like yeah. everything he does, it 
every character, ridiculous. everything he does for his character, and, and in real life, he's he's just a ridiculous person in general. He's like he's one of the best people I've ever yes, met. Yes, he is the nicest. One of the nicest, nicest people I've ever met. Dude is charismatic. Like when he yes. is in a room, he owns the room. Yes, and I mean it's great. And so like when with his character being the way it is, it suits him so well, and it's like someone cranked up the volume to eleven on him. Yeah, and my character is just at a point where it's so annoyed with him. It's like, <laughs> why am I friends with this person? And eventually, you know, we want to kind of flip roles and stuff. But, uh-huh. You know, we'll have those episodes where it's kind of like a Jake and Amir thing. I, exactly. I see it. I, the way I describe it is, it is the uh, it's the friend spinoff we always wanted of Joey <laughs> and Chandler. Oh shit! And except I play the role as Chandler. Just much more serious. Just much more serious and not as sarcastic. Yeah. Whereas Felipe plays the role of Joey, just, just brown. way dumber. <laughs> just way dumber and Mexican. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, I I really, well, I I pay attention to like little things in com when it comes to comedy. I pay attention to little things like timing, uh, like the phys- I I love the physicality that you guys put into it. Like just like little quirks that you guys yep. put into your movements and like. Felipe, like we we do pretty much all of it like ad lib off the top of our head, like, and that's I can tell. Like we you can tell, but that's just how you guys are. Yeah, we don't do scripts. We just we we'll write out like maybe a basic timeline, or we'll talk about it before we shoot the scene. Yeah, but like all the interviews are just kind of off the top of our head, and like we just figure out the pacing that we want to do, and uh, I feel like we do a really good job at pacing what we want to say, especially like. This past one with, like, all the interviews. Yeah. Um, like, Felipe just – he has that timing of when to just be an, a complete idiot, and it's fantastic. <laughs> and and you get to do this in public, too. <laughs> I know. And, like, we'll, like, we'll have, like, random people. Like, uh, I don't know if you guys if, – if any of the viewers, check them out. But there's an episode called Dishes, <laughs> and we pretty much just – that we have an NBA. We have a shootout, a Nerf basketball shootout, to see who does the dishes, and we just do shots all around Chicago. Which you guys used to do that at your old your old place. Yeah, we used to. You did we used to have videos. a play called, We used to have a thing called Dorm Ball, and like the show is based off of all real life things. Like there's gonna be like stuff that comes up. Like anyway, yeah, I'll get to that a little bit. <laughs> but <laughs> Dorm Ball was like a thing that we would play with this Nerf basketball hoop in our living room. We would just play horse. Yeah. And eventually it was like, we'll play horse to see who does the dishes. And like, just things like that. And it's always the stupidest shots. Like, I spent two weeks trying to kick the ball off the wall into the hoop. And I finally made it. And that was like the <laughs> toughest shot anybody made. And then I think finally Skyler made like this absolutely ridiculous shot where he like took off his flip flop, hit it, it hit the ceiling, and then hit like in the hoop. <laughs> wow. We're like, what? I can't make that because I don't even own a flip flop. That's yeah. not fair. It's not fair. But uh, yeah, like these, these are all things based off like what we did in the original apartment with me, him, and Skyler. Like the sh- we our original like shot where our little demo shot was. Uh, Felipe comes down and he finds gummy bears or gummy worms all over the floor, and he yells at me, and I wake up and I have one stuck in my beard. This is at the time where I had my beard out pretty bushy. That's from a real thing. <laughs> we were sitting there, and I was I was watching uh, Netflix. I don't remember what show. And Felipe is like, hey, I'm going to go to bed. And this was for someone's 21st birthday party. And I was like, all right, I'm going to sit. I'm going to watch TV. Well, I guess he came down, like, probably like an hour or so later. And he sees me passed out on the couch. Except I'm passed out in, like, a weird position. Yeah. And... There was some gummy worms all over the floor. <laughs> and he, like, yells at me, and I look up at him, and I've got my hoodie on, and I just have a gummy worm in my beard. <laughs> and he's just like, what the hell is going on? Oh, my I'm, God. I don't remember it. <laughs> I don't. I don't remember passing out. Yeah. Or any of it. But I was gone. Done. Yeah. And then that, uh, like... Just other things were like I put my head through a wall because of a video game, just out of pure anger. I don't know if I ever told you that. I don't think you did. I was playing Destiny. Yeah. And I, we were doing a raid. Uh huh. And this was my first time ever doing it. 
and I mean, I'm a fairly quick learner. And I'm trying to figure out what's going on. Nobody's telling me. It's like, just tell me my role, what I need to do, and I'll do it. It's not that hard a concept, I felt like. Yeah. And so I'm like telling these guys, hey, you need to tell me what to do. And they're not telling me. We just keep on dying. Keep on dying. Keep on dying. We've been at this part for like an hour. And I'm like, guys, tell me what to do. Finally, after I snapped, they told me what to do. But it was too late, and I grabbed the closet door, and I gr- just... Mm, ran my head through it. <laughs> so there was a giant hole. Oh my God. Where my forehead went through the door. <laughs> and yeah, it's just, just stuff like that. But we, we try to like base everything on like, like real things that like roommates would have trouble with uh-huh. or like things that we had, you know, while we were roommates and then we want to expand, you know, we want to bring our friends into it. We, yeah. We want to bring our friends from back home. Like Cesar, we want, what. Well, we want more guest appearances. Oh, definitely. And then we have friends up in Chicago that we'd like to bring into it as, mm-hmm. as well. So we're hoping it hoping it continues to be pretty well received by the people that watch it. Hopefully more people watch it. And then we can just keep on growing, keep on building. Yeah. And that's the goal. I was going to say, do you, do you want this to become a full-time thing? It'd be nice. I mean, yeah, like course. that's I have a lot of things I want to do. Yeah. I'm... I'm a, not a one-trick pony when it comes to this is what I want for a career. I have a lot of stuff I want to do. And one of the things I want to do is I want to write. I want to write like books. I want to write shows. I want to write movies. Like This is a passion of mine. Yeah. Like I'm working on a book right now. Not very far on it because I'm one of those people that's a perfectionist, and every time I see it, I'm like, I can do better. Yeah. So I always restart, which is not good. Don't do that. If you're a writer, just write. just write and then edit when you're done. Don't exactly. edit while doing it. But uh, so I'm currently writing a book, and then I work on these episodes to try to come up with ideas. And again, we don't really write scripts for them, though. But I would eventually like to kind of write longer episodes because mm-hmm. our, our current episode links they generally range between like three to five minutes. Some have been a little bit longer. Yeah. But uh, I would like eventually for them to become like, you know, maybe 15, 20 minutes. Something like that. That'd be really cool, especially if they're entertaining, like yeah, throughout the entire episode. Yeah, exactly. And I, I mean, we've all had bad roommate experiences. Oh boy, have we? Yes, I mean everybody has. <laughs> if you haven't, then I mean, good, good for you. But yeah. uh, a lot of us have had bad roommate experiences, whether it be went off to college, had a bad dorm dorm mate, paired up with a buddy, didn't work out, you know. Done All that on it. multiple occasions. <laughs> yeah, I mean it. It happens. This this podcast this podcast was almost originally founded on a roommate ship that yeah exactly didn't quite work out. But you know what? Like you live and you learn. Yeah, and we can all relate to this. So we want it to be a relatable, fun experience for everybody, and then we want it to build and become, you know, something popular, something something that grows. I hope so. I mean. And I, like that, that was one of the reasons. I mean, besides you being like one of my best friends throughout the years, that was one of the reasons I wanted to bring you onto the show because you have something that you can promote, that mm-hmm. you can that you can promote on my podcast through my podcasting network, the Journey into Comics Network. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and uh, hopefully, you can grab some some fucking potential viewers and subscribers from our audience. Subscribe. Yeah, please subscribe. Subscribe right now. Go yep. to go to YouTube. Search Innator. Forget the V. It's not Invader. Search Innator Zim. All one word. You'll find me. Subscribe. Yeah. <laughs> I, I remember I had I had some criticism for your Let's Plays originally. Yeah. And I told you, I, I watched, you had uh, Horizon. Horizon Zero Dawn. Yeah. I watched those and I'm like, man, like, there's some good stuff here, but, like, it's not Matt. This isn't Matt quality. Yeah. (laughs) Because I I remember playing video games with you in high school, and we would have so much fun and do so much stupid shit and just have a fucking blast. Even even when you were raging, it was still fun. Yeah, which is quite often, actually. Oh, yeah, he is is a rager. He is a video game rager. Like I said, I put my head through a door because of a game. (laughs) But, like, I don't know. Let's Plays are a different story, man. They're hard. Well, yeah, because you got to play it. And then you got to edit through all the bullshit to find the like you have to trim so much fat. Yeah, yeah, you have to get so much footage, and it's they're they're very difficult for like first person shooters PvP. It's not as bad, 
Um, I do a lot of like fill in voice fill ins and stuff. Yeah. Cause sometimes I get really focused and I don't, I forget to talk, but as far as like doing like a let's play of like a storyline game, you know, like horizon or, uh, another one I was going to do was on the uncharted series. Oh yeah. I was, I just, it's very difficult cause you're trying to react to what the story is doing. But also, like, if it's your first time playing it... Yeah, you kind of want to experience it. You want to experience it. <laughs> and, like, it's everything's new to you. Yeah. So, like, there's times where it's not going to look good. It's going to look terrible as you're playing. And you're, you're just... You're bad. And you don't want to be bad. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, Let's Plays are just different. Because you have to focus on so many different things all at once. you got to focus on playing. you got to focus on this. you got to focus on talking. You have to... It's it's a lot harder than what mm. everybody thinks. I was I had the mindset of oh this will be easy this cannot be that hard, and then I try to do one and I listen to it. I watched my first video, and I was like this is terrible. And I mean I'll be honest, my let's plays are still probably not the best, but I, they've improved. Uh, what was the last one you did? Uh, the last one I did was the the, the Destiny one. Yeah, the Destiny that was a two. lot better. Yeah. That was a lot better. Yeah, you're you're uh, talking about a certain like an exotic weapon. Yeah, it was the uh, the faction rally winter weapon, the haunted earth scout oh. rifle. Yeah, and so yeah, that was the that was the last let's play I did, and it was it was probably one of my best let's plays. Definitely, uh, I I have to agree because it was it seemed so much more comfortable and natural. Yeah, and it, it seemed like a let's like many like not this is gonna sound bad because I don't want to make you sound like. You're just like everybody else, but it sounded a lot more like all the other Let's Plays I've watched. Yeah, which is it, it, I say that in a good way because it, it means you're 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 in that direction. You're you need right to find direction. your niche. Yeah, you need to find your where you're comfortable at, and it takes time. All you really got to do, and I know you're really good at it, just start yelling obscenities and stuff, <laughs> and like well, uh, you can't occasionally that. drop the racial slur. You you can be PewDiePie. I can be PewDiePie. <laughs> well, the thing is, like, with like YouTube's new like apocalypse thing yeah you can't do that kind of stuff anymore and i mean like granted you can't really even have a monetized account anymore until you have like ten thousand views mm -hmm. but it's it's something that i want to get in the habit of where i try not to cuss as much because one that is one thing i do a lot when i play games i as well well and, not I, i'm just talking life in general for me but <laughs> uh, yeah well same here but I mean, if you've why I listened, love this podcast. If you listen to this podcast, you can tell I have a little bit of a potty mouth. Oh me, yeah, but... this, this, well, that's what I love about this podcast. It's a free form, anything goes podcast. I yep. mean, shit. We uh, a couple weeks ago for episode six or episode five. It was episode five. I had my buddy Richard on here, and the very first topic we talked about was um, seeing your dad's dick for the first time <laughs> and how it ruins you for the rest of your life. <laughs> Yeah, it does. <laughs> <laughs> I actually have I have the list of topics right here. <laughs> Seeing your dad's penis for the first at a young age and how it ruins you for life. Troll dogs are possibly based on a racist corporation. Madonna and her muscular vagina. Ew. Batman and his sheer awesomeness. Uh, he wanted to talk about how hot my mom is. Uh, <laughs> we didn't. Turns out that was just a joke topic that he threw in there to well, throw I me mean, off. Cool. Uh, Disney is a pedophile's paradise. Can and, I even get into Disney World? I don't think. No, he's talking about like how like I can't remember what exactly he talked about that. I, I I don't know what direction he was. You know, I never know what direction he's going for anything. It's him. Yeah, he he, he will be back on this show though. <laughs> he was uh, he was quite the hoot. Uh, there, I got if you want to watch, we did a live stream too. Yeah, uh, definitely. Man. Uh, it's it was a lot of fun. Uh, I I I hope to eventually get to be able to live stream all of my episodes. Absolutely. Uh, once I get a, a better, more comfortable setup where we can both be in front of the screen and not one person off to the side like yeah. we are right now. But um, yeah, like I said, this is a. Anything goes. It don't matter what the fuck you say. I don't care what you say. I don't care what I say. I don't care what I say. If you had... It'll be like that South Park episode where they have like the little oh, the shit, shit counter. The shit counter, yeah. That's old. I know, because I'm old. <laughs> We're old. Yeah. I'm older than you. Fuck off. <laughs> We're probably like a year. And like... Six months. Whatever. It's about six months. It's about six months. <laughs> but either way, it's... You're barely older than me, and on top of it, like, you look younger than me. <laughs> well, thank you. Oh, thank you, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, the Let's Play is like, I, I feel like I'm getting more comfortable with mm -hmm. my character. 
You are. And you can tell. Eventually, I hope you know to start getting some you know soundproof stuff because like my, my ceilings in my in that room are like ten feet tall, and that is a bare ass room. So I if I clap, there's an echo. Yeah. So I eventually want to get some like acoustic treatment and stuff in there, help out with whatever I have like acoustic wise. Because I feel like that's one thing that my videos do lack as far as quality is I try to do noise reductions and stuff like that. Yeah. But like. I'll be honest. I'm not an audio engineer. I don't really know how to work through any of that stuff. I I learn as I go while editing. Yeah, that's, uh, like, that's how I did it for a while. Uh, the occasional YouTube tutorial helps. Yeah, too. I mean, I watch I watch some YouTube tutorials about like Adobe Premiere. Yeah. And stuff, but I'm more focused on like, do I I want my shots to look good? Make focus on your content for yeah. sure. I like, want my shots to look good. I want my transitions to seem smooth, and everything like that. That's what I try to focus on, and like. That's, I mean, that's what's good with Let's Plays. Like, it's improve, a lot of cuts. Yeah, improve the improve the rest as you go. Yeah. As you And again, eventually, like, my audio quality, I've, I've got a good mic. Yeah. I mean, granted, it's a, it's not the best, but it's it's a, it's still a blue snowball. Okay, it's I think... A, it's a good quality mic. I think one of our one of our other podcasters on the network, uh, Andrew Poor, uh, on the Poor Report, he uses that, if I remember right. I mean, it's, it's, it's near the same quality as the Blue Yeti, which is a good mic, solid mm-hmm. mic. Yes. And... It's smaller. USB mic, right? Yeah, it's a okay. USB mic. And I mean, yeah, that's pretty much it. I want to get a little bit more equipment, but that requires finances. It does. That and I do not know, have at this moment. <laughs> have you ever? Do you know what Patreon is? Yeah, but I mean, who's going to want to pay me? It happens. We have we have uh, $13 a month coming okay. to us. Well, I mean, <laughs> but that pays for, our, that pays for um, the Journey into Comics uh bandwidth like uh, the subscription on podbean to yeah. host everything it's it pays for the hosting is what i'm trying to say that can buy me a pop Words. filter yeah <laughs> which pop. i mean i have a pop filter but you know what i mean it can it'll it'll help yes but yeah like i just eventually i want to build up a little bit want to get a full on pc because right now i just use a laptop yeah if i actually have a pc with a laptop it's going to help out a lot mm-hmm. so it's it's just a matter of time I think before you know it continues, I think it's going. I think I think eventually it'll be you know something, something good. I don't know if it's going to be something I can make a living off of. I, I yeah. never really had that goal. It'd been nice. I mean, when you go to start it, you're like, yeah, that'd be so cool. But realistically, it was never like a dream of mine to be like, oh, this is going to be my full time job starting yeah. a YouTube channel. Don't my, get me wrong. I oh. just wanted to make content. Yeah. And I wanted to have fun doing it, and I wanted to make content that people would enjoy watching and, like, you know, interact with me a little bit. Yeah. So, that's I I much agree. It. Like, I love Subaru. I love working at Subaru. I love the money it gives me. Yeah. But, like, I was thinking to myself, one time I was walking down to the vault. Uh, I was meeting somebody down there, and I was just walking by the vault. Uh, it's a bar in town, for those listening. Uh, it's, I, I go to it frequently. Not so much lately, but anyway, so I was walking down there. I'm like, it was like a week night, and I'm like, man, I wish I could just get fucking plastered tonight. Yeah. <laughs> but I got to work. And I just thought to myself, fuck, dude, if I podcasted for like a living, I could do that. Yeah. <laughs> In fact, I could, I could get plastered while I podcast. Yeah. Like, like, but so that's a goal. Yeah. I mean, it's, I mean, would it be nice in the future? Yes. Oh, like, yeah. If everything continues to build. Yes, all this would be great. Is it a realistic goal in mind? It's a little difficult. It is difficult because, I mean, how many people are trying all this stuff? Exactly. You know, there's a new podcasts, a new YouTube you're, channel. Yeah, you're swimming in an ocean full of it. Yeah, and then, like, I mean, the new thing is streaming. Yeah. Like Twitch. Twitch is – There's a there's an income source right there for yeah. you. Twitch is insanely popular. I've tried it. Unfortunately, my laptop doesn't like to render shit at 30 FPS. Ooh. Yeah, which makes me super sad. Yeah. But uh, hopefully I can try to figure out and fix that because if I can do that, then I'm going to try to start doing some Twitch streams, which you can find the link and everything on my YouTube. Yeah. Same with Facebook and my Twitter pages, so go follow me. All, and all of that is in A to Zim. Yep, all of it's in A to Zim. Just look me up, man. Hell yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I just got a funny text. <laughs> oh, cool. 
I thought you were like uh, micro. Oh, <laughs> oh, kids say the darndest things. Uh, yeah. So my girlfriend has two kids. Cool. Uh, a son and a daughter, three and four. And she made the mistake of saying, telling her, telling her kids that my name was Dick. I asked her, I was like, what are you going to introduce your kids to me? And I was like, Blaine or Dick? She goes, oh, Dick. Should have been Blaine. <laughs> Should have definitely been Blaine because things have been said that do not sound right coming out of a child's mouth. <laughs> uh, her daughter, her daughter said, or before I, I, I was coming, I went over there the other day and before I got there, uh, her daughter told her, I'm, I'm going to sit on Dick. Now I'm like, please don't take this out of context. Yeah, please don't take this out of context. <laughs> she she meant she was gonna sit on my lap. Anyway, uh, and I she told me this when I got there, and she was laughing. She thought it was funny, but I looked at her. I'm like, oh, we gotta change this. I am not about to be asked a bunch of fucking questions. Yeah, no, 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 no. Yeah, kids say the darndest things. I miss that show. That did too. I was actually just thinking about oh. that. Well, she said her son just said, fuck your mouth. <laughs> her three-year-old, her three-year-old son said that who is a, a quiet, he's a quiet dude. So that's pretty funny to hear, to read that. He's grounded. He's, he's so grounded. <laughs> no, her kids are great. Um, Don't have any kids. Neither does my fiance. I want a kid. I have baby fever too, but I want a kid. I've always wanted a kid. You know, I've always wanted a kid. Yeah. But I, I know right now I'm not in the position to be yeah. able to take care of a child. I'm too immature. Like, me and him would be playing video games against each other. I wouldn't let him win. <laughs> and or if he did beat me, I'd be like, "Yo, I can still fuck your mom." <laughs> <laughs> you know, just shit like that. Oh my god, you I would, talk so much shit to yourself. I would. I, I would break him emotionally, and that's not right for a father to do. <laughs> so I, I'm just like. When I think about having kids, I'm like, no, I'll wait like five years. I should be yeah. an adult by then. Yeah, I can't. I was. I can't believe I was trying to have a kid at like 2021. 20, yeah, when I was engaged and shit. No, like, oh, I wanted a family then. Like, uh, had I had I known what I know now, like, <laughs> I feel like I, at any point I would I would have been ready. I would have been able to handle it. But like, would have been good for me? No. I mean, now it forces I can, you to grow up. It does. And, you know, like, I've always been kind of – I. Uh, th- this will probably get talked on. We have another another podcast that I'm about to plug, <laughs> The Voice of Survival, where uh, Nate, our, our pod father, Nate Phillips, uh, he, uh, <laughs> he, he, does, he goes in and interviews people. It's kind of an interview thing. It's, it's more like, hey, I'm going to get to know you. Mm-hmm. And he'll ask you some questions about your life, and you just tell your story. Yeah. And um, – but like he 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 said he's he's already got an, an episode for me a number, and I don't know what number it is. But I told him I was like I don't want to be right away. I want you to get other people on there. I'm already on your podcasting network a lot. Like, it should have been four. Oh, I know. Like my favorite fucking number. Yeah, episode <sighs> four. That was that was a cool episode. He uh, interviewed somebody for that was out in um, Texas, and it was it, it was part of a, a hurricane relief podcasting thing. Oh, so, that's cool. Uh, they. It was people donated money. They got like a whole package of podcasting, and then all the money goes to victims of Hurricane. Uh, well, Harvey was. Uh, it was Har- Houston, I think right? it was Harvey. Yeah, it was definitely Harvey at the time. It was before Irma, and it was it, so it was for Her- Hurricane Harvey victims that were also podcasters. So it was it was really neat. Uh, episode four, voice of podcast, voice of podcasting, <laughs> voice of survival. Uh, check that out. Um, also, just check out that in general, but. No, I, I, the, I'm about to probably delve into stuff that I'd probably. What was I even talking about? You're talking about kids. Yeah, like so I'm about to delve into stuff that I'll probably talk about on there more in depth. But like I feel like I've, I've always kind of skipped ahead, in terms like I've I've always been mature, but like I've skipped ahead in life in part in places where I should have just been in the moment enjoying myself. So like I'm I'm at this point in my life where I'm finally enjoying those things that I should have enjoyed years ago. Like yeah. Like last year I had my party phase where I'd go out and go out to bars like every fucking weekend and just get plastered. Now I'm doing this like I'm creating content and doing things fun and creatively like where I should have been doing it years ago when I was learning about it and actually had time and drive to do it. Yeah. 
I am 100% there with you. I'm, I look at my life and I'm like, I'm 26. I have a bachelor's degree that's pretty much useless. And then like, but I, I want to make this content and stuff. Yeah. It's like, why did I not go to school for this stuff? Right. I mean, I took some classes in high school, but can we really say those were classes? <laughs> I was there. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> our See, teacher, our teacher literally told us, Hey, do something. Yeah, I don't have <laughs> curriculum for you, so we're going to play Dota. Yeah, we play video games. We yeah, play Halo, we, we play Age we of played, Empires and StarCraft. And The entire last week of my senior year, I brought my Xbox in. Mm-hmm. And we just played Call of Duty and Halo 3 on a, on the projector in the classroom. Yeah. Like, like you were in the advanced class, which coincided with the at the exact same time as the regular class, the mm-hmm. interactive media and uh, so basically you guys were the initial class from the year before. Yep. And that for from what I understood, like that class didn't technically exist. It was still interactive media. But you'd already been in it, so it was just like you, he just basically said go learn how to do stuff. Yeah, he would like and tell show us me. he would tell us some assignments on what he wanted us to do and he's like go figure out how to do it. And it would literally only take us like and you guys became like in charge of things like school events, like filming them and stuff. Like yeah, that. like it was, like, was kind of like an AV club. Almost. Yeah, essentially, like we uh, like there was like some school cook off thing. Yeah, for I remember that. And we were in charge of filming it, editing it, putting it together. We had a concert that was film that was shot at the school. Amanda we tra- Overmeyer. Yeah, we were in charge of filming that and piecing it together, editing it, you know, all that stuff. So, and I actually I did the poster for that. Yeah. I, I think I did the actual video editing. Mm-hmm. Me and a girl, the only girl in that class. Aubrey? Aubrey McCarty. Yeah. yeah. We we did the editing. Uh, and then for the most part after that, it was just like, oh, okay, well, we're going to play Dota. And that was it. Our teacher would play Dota with Oh, us. yeah, and he would talk shit the whole yeah, time. He, 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 I remember he talked so much shit to my, my current roommate, Andy. <laughs> You're like, fuck you, Andy. <laughs> Me and him got in a fight over which Star Wars was the best. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because I was trying to troll him. Good old Dale. Tried to troll him, and I told Dude. him it was Return of the Jedi. And he was like, no, it's the Empire. He was so mad. Oh, yeah, Empire's way better. Oh, yeah, no, without a doubt. But it was hilarious seeing how <laughs> mad he got. Empire Strikes Back is the best of the original trilogy mm-hmm. and the best Star Wars by far. But I kept saying no as Return of the Jedi. It was episode six, and he was so angry, and it was so funny. <laughs> he just kept getting more and more, more pissed. Yeah. And eventually he's like, you know, just get out of my face. <laughs> and like he dropped it. See, Dale, he wasn't too much older than us. He was like maybe five, six years older than yeah, us. Yeah, like he had, he graduated college, and then he would he lived in Illinois as like a graphic designer for like a minor league baseball team. For yeah. Like four years and then he came and taught school so he's only a few years older than we were and Mm -hmm. we were his first ever teaching experience so and boy oh boy did we give him an experience yes we did (laughs) i story time we were always in like the same homeroom class together because our last names are very similar yeah well Well, they they basically put close (laughs) they put they put uh people in homerooms based off of last name so a through whatever went to this one, blah, 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 blah so on. Well, I, my last name starts with T, his starts with a W. So we're both at the end of the list, basically. And uh, so <laughs> our senior year, we discovered that we could get passes out. Well, we, we always knew, but we, we could get passes out of the class. And we would always get a pass from uh, our teacher, Dale. <laughs> It's a very inactive media, but we would we'd be like, yeah, we need a pass, and he'd just give it to us, and we would never go. <laughs> we'd never well, go to his class. We would, but we'd always, like, we'd go to his class. We'd show up for, like, a we'd, minute. We'd show up there for a minute, be like, hey, what's up? Then we'd be like, hey, we're going to the vending machine. He's like, okay. We'd go to the vending machine, and then we'd just walk around the hall until homeroom was over. Yeah. And then finally the vice principal caught us. Was that what happened? Yeah, I remember because – for like the longest time, he wouldn't give us a pass anymore. Yeah. Well, I knew I knew we got in trouble. Yeah. I knew we got in trouble, but I couldn't remember what exactly no, it, what happened. It was Brandon that caught us in the little theater. Yeah. <laughs> and what are you doing? Yeah. He's like, "What are you doing down here?" And we're just like, "Nothing." As I got like a Snicker bar stuffed in my face, 
And yeah, we would just walk around and fucking yeah. fuck off the whole yeah. fucking 15, 20 minutes of. Yeah. And then he, we had to go back to Dale's class and then he talked to us. He's like, I'm pissed off. You guys took advantage of me. And we're like, we didn't actually mean to. We were just whatever. <laughs> yeah. We, we didn't mean to. We were just doing it. Yeah. I guess. <laughs> Sorry. And then LePage, like, uh, was it LePage? Yeah, LePage was our actual homeroom teacher. And then finally, when we were able to get passes again, he's like, you guys are going to actually go, right? And we're like, yes. <laughs> and then we went to Dale's and just sat on the computer the whole time. Went to Dale's and played games. <coughs> I was in Dale's classroom for literally three-fourths of the day my senior year. Yeah. So my senior year was comprised of just me playing video games. I Sounds like my kind of like... I was with Brummett most of the day, Mrs. Brummett. Yep. She was she was my uh, photography teacher, which turned into we're not doing anything all year except yep. for maybe helping the, the yearbook staff occasionally. And then I was also her student aide for my study hall. Mm-hmm. So I, I spent about two-fourths of the day, half the day, on a couch texting people. And, well, my senior year consisted of my first period was weightlifting. And my second period was study hall, which I was Mrs. Kinsey's aide, who was the other interactive media teacher. She never needed my help. Yeah, Brummett didn't either. And when she did need my help, it was just like quick little answers that I could answer like that. Yeah. So I just spent all all of that second period playing games. Then third period, I think, is when I we had like econ and government. Yeah. Then we had that class. Then it was to Dale's class. Then lunch, and then, like, literally the rest of the day with Dale. Yeah. And it was just, like, I for three-fourths of my senior year, I sat in that computer room playing video games and occasionally just doing, like, random projects that I felt like I yeah. wanted to do. I remember messing around on GarageBand quite a bit. Yeah, I had fun with that. Like, that's one thing I actually wanted to go to school for for the longest time was to do, like, audio engineering for, like, movies like scoring sh- like shows like do like the ominous tones for csi and shit, <laughs> shit like that you know i remember what i was about to, i was about to mention forgetting sarah marshall i love that movie so much because yeah, that's what he does He's, he scores films and tv shows <laughs> it's not it's not music it's just ominous tone the <laughs> masturbating dog killer is on the loose again I don't remember the rest. <laughs> <laughs> great quote something great about quote. the dog being happy Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> and he's like, Wah. best part of that movie is when he's playing the Muppets theme song on the piano. Yeah. And then like right when he gets to the end, he just starts bawling hysterically. <laughs> My favorite part of that movie was like that, just like that random montage of things he's doing at his house. <laughs> and it just cut like out of the blue. He's just like, he goes to the fucking Gandalf thing. He's like, <laughs> you shall not pass. And it is just so out of nowhere and so quick and o- like over like that. And you're just like, what the fuck did I just watch? <laughs> yeah. Like the best, like it's seriously such a good movie. If you haven't seen Forgetting Sarah Marshall, please watch it. Yes. Jason Siegel, Mila Kunis. Yes. And Russell Brand. It's got Kristen Bell too. Kristen Bell. Yeah. And, uh, but he just, he's so funny in that movie. Mm-hmm. Any scene where he cries, I'm just like, <laughs> it's the best thing. Like he, He's bawling hysterically on his first night in Hawaii, and they call the, like his room, and he's yeah. like, yeah, I think she's the lady above me. You're on the top floor, sir. And he's like, I'll try to keep it down. Cuts to Mila Kunis, and she looks concerned. Then it cuts back to him. He's just in the fetal position on the floor going, <laughs> <laughs> like, it's the best thing ever. Yeah. <laughs> brought, brought us Get Him to the Greek. Yes, which was good, an okay movie. Good spinoff, but, you know, was, not near as good. The The trailers made it. So much more. Yeah, the trailers made it seem like it was going to be amazing. And then when you watch it, you were like, honestly, the best character is P. Diddy. <laughs> yeah. He's like, you can't outrun me. I'm black. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know how many how much money it costs and for these I kids was, Jordans? I was talking to somebody about this the other day. I was actually talking about the fucking Get Him to the Greek uh, soundtrack and how they actually – Oh, oh! I was—it was my tattoo artist. I was talking—I was getting yeah. my—I was getting my Game of Thrones tattoo the other day, <laughs> and uh, she she was talking. I don't know what brought it up, but she's like, "Yeah." Uh, she started just started talking about the fucking "Get Him to the Greek" soundtrack, and I'm like, "Yeah, all the songs that were in the movie are on the soundtrack, yeah. and they're like not real songs." Yeah, they made them real songs for the soundtrack, and that was awesome. <laughs> the like, best, the best Russell Brand song was "Inside of You." Inside of you. That one is my like favorite one. Yeah, that one's good. Just yeah, because of, good. like, 
his movements on the stage. What was that? Singing? African Child. <laughs> yeah. I, I like that. Because <laughs> that's the one that killed it's his. So career, bad. Wasn't it? It's so bad. Yeah, in the movie, they're like, yeah, listen, African Child is not good. <laughs> that's not. your. Uh, that's your. Your bad one. Just stop. I'm gonna look up the soundtrack for "Get Him to the Greek." Do it. Ah. All right, we got the soundtrack pulled up. I don't know what my favorite movie soundtrack is. Lots of lots of infant sorrow. Actually, it's all okay. Oh yeah, because that's why it came on. Um, somebody like the tattoo or the shop that the, had music playing in the background and. Um, Ring Round by Jackie Q came on. I was like, holy shit, is this seriously fucking from the Get Him to the Greek soundtrack? <laughs> it was the Ring Round my posy. Yeah. And he's just talking about, I'm, I'm really talking about my asshole. <laughs> yeah. Whatever at the end. <laughs> I, I downloaded this. I remember it. And, oh, it doesn't have it on here. But um, it's supposed to have Chocolate Daddy. Does it really? It's supposed to, I have Chocolate Daddy on my computer somewhere. Fuck your shit up. <laughs> oh, performed by Jumbo Shrimp. <laughs> go, go fuck your bitch. Go fuck your shit. Now that's a game changer. <laughs> that's a game changer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> God damn. I love movies. Movies uh, are like yeah. some of my favorite things on this planet. We used to watch so many movies together. Yeah. Like we remember that time we watched Rocky in the middle of the night? Dude. And then we were so pumped up, we ran over to the, the <laughs> high school track and, just, and ran around. Well, you guys ran around the track, like yeah, you punching the us. air. <laughs> yeah, I, I stood on this. I stood on the bleachers filming you guys. Shadow box while jogging around the yeah. track. Yeah. <laughs> yep. We used to watch so many movies in that fucking projector room you had. Yeah, it was nice. It was a, it's a good room. It Got was. memories. <laughs> Lots of memories. God damn, watched so many movies in there. Then, uh, but yeah, Mike. Back to the soundtracks. Like I don't know what my favorite movie soundtrack is. I mean, you can't go wrong with the Bodyguard and Whitney Houston. I don't know. Never seen it. I haven't seen the Bodyguard. I mean, it's an old ass movie, I guess. But yeah, like the soundtrack, you know the soundtrack. Like it's got the one with "I Will Always Love You" on. Oh God. It. Yeah. Don't oh God. Oh God. You'd love that song. You know Do it. I? Yes, because <laughs> everyone loves that song. Eh. Make me sick. Eh. <laughs> Best soundtrack is obviously City of the Angel- City of Angels. Goo Goo Dolls. Yeah, Iris. I mean that is a good, a good one. So Punisher had broken. Yeah, I mean there's like always like a standout song on soundtracks. Yeah. So you you just basically gotta pick which one you like the most. <laughs> and Transformers, they always have Lincoln. They always had Lincoln Park. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> um, they simultaneously like relaunched Lincoln Park's career and ruined it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was weird because like I remember when the first one came out. What I've done. Yeah, what I done was there was the song, and we were like, "Is that Lincoln Park?" And. We were like, yeah, dude, they're back. And then, like, they just, the Transformers movie kept coming. We were like, <laughs> they just didn't stop. We we're like, dude, these are so bad. And then every I time. I liked them. I liked every one of them but the third one. See, I didn't, I, I liked the first one. The second one, I was like, yeah, you know, it's not bad. It's not terrible. It's not the greatest. Yeah. It's not bad. And then the third one came out, and pretty much the only thing I liked about it was the fact that they had a Victoria's Secret angel to be the. Megan Fox's replacement. Exactly. But, like, as far as, like, storyline, I was like, so this Prime now is evil. It's like Megatron. They just kept making Megatron more and more of a bitch in each movie. Yeah. And that rubbed me the wrong way. I didn't like it. Because the first movie. He... They, they made him more and more like Starscream. Yeah. The first movie, he just pounded Optimus into the ground repeatedly. Yeah. Like, Optimus couldn't do anything against him. By the second movie, Optimus is like Aragorn from Lord of the Rings. Just wrecking everything. Yeah. And it was just ridiculous. So. Then you got Age of Extinction. Did you ever watch Age of Extinction? No, I didn't watch anything after the third um, there Age of Extinction is the one with uh, Mark, Mark Wahlberg. Wahlberg, right? The only issue, I, I mean, the only issue I really had with that was probably the well, same thing everybody else. Is like, all of a sudden, Marky Mark is, like, he's, he plays this, like, nerdy inventor who's, like, fucking jacked as hell and, like, yeah. Marky Mark, you know? 
Paul Mark Wahlbergy. Oh, all Mark Wahlbergy. <laughs> yep. But it, it, he's like he's an inventor and he's a scientist and uh, and all of a sudden he picks up this alien weapon that has no sights on it whatsoever and he can shoot it perfectly. He just he's like auto- automatically combat trained and all that. And it's like God damn it. Yep. Good old Michael Bay film, man. Yeah, and, but the the this last one, the last night. Mm-hmm. Actually pretty decent. Is it? Actually pretty decent. Okay, I might have to check that one Definitely out. Definitely check it. And you don't really have to watch. The, you kind of do have to, because you, you get to know some of the characters, like some of the uh, Autobots from Age of Extinction come back. Mm-hmm. Uh, Bumblebee's, and of course, in every single one of them. But, he has to be. He's a staple yeah. by this point. But you don't necessarily have to watch Age of Extinction. Okay. You can. It might help. But you don't have to. Okay. It's definitely worth a watch. It's got Anthony Hopkins. He's a good actor, and uh, I, I I dug the story behind it. I I dug it. I don't know. Lately, I've just been into, like, I'm not really into movies. Like lately, same. Like the movies that I do watch, like I'm, I'm very picky about them, and like the movies I do watch, I'm like they've got to be like at least like two hours long. Yeah. And they and I have like a coherent story. Basically, I only watch something if it's nominated for an Oscar. Oh shit. Like, yeah, like my favorite movie I've seen in theaters for like the like past like year or two is La La Land. I haven't seen it yet. It's on HBO now, so super good. You should watch it. I, I've been wanting to because uh, our our good friend Austin Welch, yes, uh, future guest, <laughs> super cool dude, super cool dude, works for BuzzFeed. Fuck yeah. him. <laughs> Fuck him. Yeah, he's like, I get to get drunk every day at work. Fuck you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, he, he keeps telling me about La La Land, how it's his favorite movie, all that jazz. I, I, I can't really get away from like the Marvel and DC movies. Like I'm, I'm into superhero movies. Uh, yeah. They're, I mean, they're really the only things, the only movies that really draw me to the theaters. Um, same here. I mean, I want to go, I wanted to go see the new it, but I couldn't convince myself to go pay the money. <laughs> I haven't seen, I haven't seen the original except for bits and pieces. See, I saw the original cause my sister is an asshole and used to torture me with it. Yeah. Um, all pretty much all the Stephen King movies. So like you know the original Carrie, which you know back in the day scary as hell. Yeah. Because like that mom was psycho in that movie, and whoever was the actress that played the mother in that film, kudos to her because she did a good job playing a very strict Christian, psycho, crazy woman. I don't even know, but um, like Cujo, it. Other things like that. You know, yeah. Children, Children of the Corn, my sister used to always put that shit on. Friday the 13th. Candyman. So, yep. So I, <laughs> I was, I've seen all of them. And then, so the new one came out. And I was like, you know, it actually doesn't look that bad. Oh, I might wait for a couple of views. Yeah, it, it actually looked really rad. I saw a yeah. video the other day because they're, they're going to be doing part two next year. Yeah. And, uh, or maybe, next year or 2019. Yeah, 2019. one of the two. Probably, probably 2019. Yeah. But I, I was seeing... The the unof- it's not official, but someone did a video where they did they cast they the people did with the video casted all the adult versions, mm-hmm. and I was really digging the cast. I had Adam Scott in it. <laughs> Adam Scott. Love Adam Scott so much. Oh yeah, he's so funny. Have you seen a uh, uh, Little Evil? I haven't. Dude, is that good? It's so it's hilarious and good. <laughs> It's a quality I, Netflix film. I love his uh, his role in Parks as Ben. Yeah, him. <laughs> oh, Rob Lowe's character in Parks and Recreation. <laughs> Every character on there. Yeah, but there's not a bad character on. I there. know, but I just I love Rob. Like the funniest thing I ever saw in Parks was Rob Lowe's character when he, uh, Ben like loses like his job. Yeah, and like he's doing the claymation stuff. <laughs> yes. And Rob Lowe is like. Talking and like he like you know is talking to Ben's character, or Adam Scott's character, and he's like, "Oh yeah, it's great." And then you know it does the like cut to the interview, and he goes, "Ben is literally depressed." <laughs> <laughs> and as soon as he said that, I just died laughing. I just loved like all the super positive, super positive, depressing shit he would say. Yes, he's like, "If I stop work, if I stop being active, I'll die from the inside." Yeah, <laughs> like I'm. I'm literally dying mentally on yeah. the inside. His character was one of the best. I have to stay active. I have to stay active to keep my mind off everything. Otherwise, I will literally die. <laughs> <laughs> Rob Lowe has always been such a, such a great um, 
com- comical actor. He, yeah, he really yeah. is. Like his role, well, he was in Dumb and Dumber, wasn't he? You know the original one, Jim Carrey. I don't know. Wasn't he in uh, Tommy Boy? Maybe I no. I'm thinking Tommy Boy. Yeah, he was in Tommy he was Boy. In he Tommy was, Boy. Cause... He was his stepbrother slash his mom's lover. Yeah, <laughs> stepmom's mother lover. Ah, whatever. Ah. I know what you're saying. But <laughs> yeah, no, it's he's in Tommy he was Boy. In Wayne's World. He was in Wayne's World. He was in Wayne's World. Yeah, he was like the like quintessential like evil good looking guy in the nineties. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, but yeah, like. When it comes to movies, though, like I am pretty jaded on them now. Like to go spend money. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I go see all the superhero ones. Even and you're disappointed. All DC Especially movies DC. are so bad. What do you think of Wonder Woman? Wonder Woman was the only good one. Wonder Wonder Woman is the shining light of hope for the right. DC universe. The Suicide Squad was garbage. I refused to go see it. As you should, because it it didn't help. The, it didn't do anything for the universe. Yeah. No, I uh, yet. I mean, Man of Steel, I thought, was an okay building block. Yeah. I didn't think it was the greatest, but I didn't think it was terrible. And then they come out with Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice. Yeah. And I haven't seen the un- I haven't seen the director's cut version. It kind of helped. I heard it kind of helped, but... It made it a little bit more cohesive. Let's be real. That's not... It's not a good story. No. Like, I understand you're trying to make Superman more relatable, He's not supposed to be. No. He is a god trying to live as a human. You know me. I'm a huge Superman fan. Yeah. Superman is my guy. And But the best thing about Batman v Superman was Batfleck. Yeah. And that we all thought, as soon as we saw that casting. Everyone thought he was going to be the worst as part. As soon as we saw that casting, everybody flipped their shit. They're like, here we go, Daredevil 2. Yeah. And no, he was fantastic. Yeah. He was, the, clo- he was the closest thing to Batman's been on film. Actually, ever. I mean, granted, he blew up a lot of people. <laughs> yes. Grant, but that's that's neither here nor there. Whatever. It's been it's they they took from Batman Returns. They they did a Batman lot Returns. from the Dark Knight Returns. Sorry, the Dark Knight Returns. Uh, Frank Miller's yeah thing, which and, is awesome. Which is awesome. I love the gritty old man Batman. Yes. Like if you have not seen that animated movie, watch it. That is one of DC's best, if not their best animated film DC animated movies are so good yes they, I love the Flashpoint Paradox that is such a good one that was so fucking good that got me into Flash yeah he, Flash is an awesome character like I've loved DC since Justice League mm-hmm. and I'm talking like the animated series back in like 2000 with like Justice League Justice League Unlimited mm-hmm. and it's Superman's always been you know the moral code that is the big boy and they turn him into like the whiny little bitch, and yeah, I get it. Like I said, you're trying to make Superman more relate- relatable. He shouldn't be. He should be the guy that gets on Batman's fucking nerves. And so, Batman v Superman was just a bad movie, with bad writing and some bad casting. Like, I think as far as like casting overall, good. I think Gal Gadot is awesome as Wonder Woman. I think Ben Affleck is great as Batman. Is Bruce Wayne, I think, could use a little bit more work. Mm-hmm. Uh, how did hold on one second? How did you say her name? Gail Gadot. Gail Gal Gail or Gal? Gail. Gail. That's how I say it. I don't know. Gail Gadot. That's how I heard it on Jimmy Fallon. <laughs> okay. All right, so let's continue on. But like, I think Ben Affleck, you know, Bruce Wayne could use a little bit of work. Mm-hmm. He needs to be a little bit more suave and, you know, kind of playboyish. And I think Henry Cavill is good as Clark Kent and Superman. Yes. But for real, Jesse Eisenberg as Lex. <laughs> well, remember when they were talking about fucking Brian Cranston? He would have been he, amazing. He would have been amazing. Like, where did that casting go? Like, get get some know. get Brian Cranston or I know people who probably would disagree with me on this one. I would I would have preferred Vin Diesel <laughs> to Jesse Eisenberg. Like, he's got the look. Yeah. And you know what? If he if you put him in a role where he has to play like an intimidating guy, he can do that. Mm-hmm. Lex is supposed to be an intimidating guy. You know who also would have been good? Um, he played Hitman, uh, Timothy Oliphant. Uh, yeah, I know who you're talking about. Yeah, he would have been a good role. Yeah, he's... I mean, because he he played he when he was Hitman, he was bald. Yep, fuck, looks the part. Yeah, and exactly. he's a good actor. Exactly. 
I just I like Jesse Eisenberg. I like Jesse Eisenberg, but, but he is a very limited actor. He has to play the role of a awkward teen that he is smart, but also he's snarky. naive. Snarky. Yeah. Like, he's good in roles like Adventureland, Zombieland, and, like, American Ultra. Yeah. Like, those are the roles he can play. He can't be an intimidating business guy. No. He lacks the, honestly, physical presence that Lex should have, the charisma. And, frankly, he just ha- he, was, he was a dude with Asperger's syndrome. <laughs> like, that's what he was. Like, he played a good Riddler. If yeah. he was Edward Nigma, then I would have been all for it. Yeah, I think we I think that's been discussed before. Yeah, like, I've, but, heard, I've heard people say that. Like he he was a terrible Lex Luthor. And I mean luckily from what I've heard on reports, he's out. He is not gonna be in Justice League. Yeah, which good. Justice League I'm nervous about. I've heard it's gotten really good reviews. See, I've heard it's gotten really good reviews, but I also heard that the original cut was unwatchable. Really well, so so Joss Whedon, yeah, fucking Joss, saved it. Josh Whedon has taken over, which he did the Avengers movie. Mm-hmm. He's also been in part of Toy Story, you know. In Toy Story, he did. Uh, I want to say he did Firefly, didn't he? I, yeah, I, I want to say that too. But uh, I mean, he's got a good track record. Um, he does. He really does. I'm just. I'm kind of. I'm happy DC has kind of gone away from the whole. I'm. Um, Zack Snyder's controlling everything. Yeah. I mean, as much as a good visual director he is, he has you no... Don't, you don't need that. I mean, I love The Watchmen. Yeah. The Watchmen's probably one of my favorite superhero movies, if not my favorite superhero movie. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, he directed it. He did a great job with it. But with the material he has now, it's not good. And he's just not doing a good job with portraying certain characters certain ways. His ideas for certain characters, just not doing a yeah. good job. No, I remember. So you have the Death of Superman comic. Yes, that is my most prized possession. It, First edition. Yeah. Death of Superman. Un, it's never been opened. This is my baby. Yeah, and I remember, I remember seeing that in your room, and I remember you. We watched uh, the Death of Superman. Uh, Doom, uh, Superman Doomsday. Superman Doomsday, the animated movie. That was, their, yeah. that was like DC, uh, DC's like first animated movie for their like universe. Yeah. Fantastic. It was really good, yes. And Now let me ask you something. What's that? How do you feel about Batman versus Superman jumping straight to Doomsday? I felt like it was a waste. It was. But at the same time, I felt like if they would have done it properly... It would have been great. Mm-hmm. Me and uh, me and Justin, while we were at work one night, we talked about the whole plot of what we think it should have been, and we pretty much discussed how Batman v Superman should have gone, and it was almost the plot of the movie they gave us, except the motives were terrible. Yeah, like Superman had no motive to hate Batman. Batman had somewhat of a motive. Yeah, and I mean I could understand Batman's motive. But Superman had none. He kind of did. I mean, was, he didn't. He didn't agree with like the way Batman was going about his. They didn't go, do a good job showing that. Though. Yeah, that was basically just Superman had beef with this dude for whatever reason and was gonna bully him. Yeah, and it wasn't right. So, but I felt like Doomsday was a waste because they should have done Superman as a way of. They should have done Superman as a trilogy. And they should have had Doomsday be the final movie. And I feel like the trilogy should have been broken up to be the start of the whole DC Extended Universe and the very end. It starts with Superman, it ends with Superman. Because Superman is the staple for every superhero. Like him or not, he is the first one. And he is the most well-known superhero. He's the alpha. Yeah, Yeah, like... You can say, oh, yeah, Batman's better all you want, but the S is the one of the most recognizable symbols on this planet. It's not an S. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> oh, my God. It means hope. It means hope. But um, I, I felt like it should have been broken up and Doomsday should have been the end. Yeah. Because that way you could have ended the trilogy with Superman dying probably halfway in the movie. 
you bring in the whole, you know, the cyborg Superman storyline, man. Shit, I don't even care if you do what you did with Harry Potter and break it up into a two-parter. Make it a four-piece movie. Mm-hmm. You bring the whole cyborg Superman, and then you bring Superman's resurrection, and he's back, and he is protecting Earth again. And then that's how you end the trilogy. But I felt like they rushed it because they're they're trying to compete with Marvel. Yeah, they gotta create a, they gotta create their own uh, expanded universe. So like we have to compete with Marvel. Cinematic Marvel's universe. doing Infinity War. We need to get this out now. You're not gonna be able to compete. So with they're Marvel. they're just immediately skipping the fucking dark side. Yeah, which I don't like that either. You don't know. I mean, Steppenwolf's a cool character, but Dark Side is Dark Side. Like, yeah, he's the end game. He is. He's looking for the anti life equation. For a reason. He is a bad some buck. So I don't like how they're pretty much jumping straight to him, I think. I don't like that either. They, they uh, Marvel did it right. Okay, so Thanos and I'll be all bad guy almost for yeah. Marvel. He's one of the he's one of the end all be all bad. He's like what he's called the what, New Titans or the Titans? I'm not as familiar with Marvel he, terminology he, his, as I am with DC. He's called the Mad Titan. Because I know like you know, Darkseid is considered one of the new gods. Well, I think Thanos was based off of Dark Side. He is. Or, he was. Or one or the other. Okay. Thanos so, was based off of Dark Side. They when they did the Marvel DC uh, crossovers. Yeah. Both both of them can hold the Infinity Gauntlet. So I mean, like they're they're basically one and the same character. Mm-hmm. For all the people that are like, oh yeah, Thanos beat the shit out of Dark Side. No, not true. They are very similar, and I mean, c- according to like other YouTube channels i've watched i watch a lot of comic book youtube stuff yeah dark side beats the shit out of Thanos. um but he shouldn't be the end game or he should be the end game he yeah he sh- should be and marvel's done a really good job of like making or at least for this phase this group of phases for the their cinematic universe they've made thanos the end all be all they, well, they, they set everything up they well. set everything up they established Very each hero well. individually while also having this underlying story yeah. in the background with they, Thanos. They started off stones. with Iron Man. And the last one is it's Spider-Man be, Homecoming? Uh, Black Panther is going to be the last one. The, well, the, I mean, the, the most recent one has been Spider-Man. Yeah. Next month we have Thor Ragnarok. Yeah, but I mean he's already an established character. Yeah. Um, so probably Black Panther or Spider-Man is going to be like the last established, you know, hero for, you know. Mm-hmm. Infinity War, like the main. So we kind of we kind of got Black Panther already established in Civil yeah. War, um, but like they're going into Infinity War. They've already got their basic like their big core heroes of Marvel besides you know probably X Men characters. Yeah. Out. So whenever Infinity War's gone, I mean, you can't have Chris Evans isn't going to be Captain America forever. No. Same with Robert Downey Jr. as Iron Man and Thor. Being Chris Hemsworth, these these actors are going to move on. They have to, so those characters are going to go with them. Not, yeah, so they're gonna have to. They're not gonna be rebooted immediately. No, that's Marvel. I don't, and Disney is not going to do that. No, so I don't understand why DC is trying to rush to compete with that. Why not wait till Infinity War's done? Go yeah, ahead, because they're they're gonna have free reign. Yeah, exactly. I'll be honest. Who would you, would you rather see a Batman movie? Or a Captain Marvel movie. No offense to the lady playing Captain Marvel. I'm going to see Batman. Yeah, for sure. And no, but Batman's been redone so many times. Exactly. Well, then that is like, no, it's a better okay. comparison. The Flash movie, oh, which man. is rumored to be the Paradox Flash pa- it will Paradox. Be. Yeah. Are you going to go want to see Flashpoint Paradox? Oh fuck or Are you yeah. going to go see a different Marvel hero that you probably haven't heard of? Oh, I'm going to go see Flashpoint. I want to go see Flashpoint. <laughs> I'm definitely going to go see these Flashpoint. These are like their main heroes. Like these are like the seven heroes that generally everybody knows when it comes to, you know, DC. And it's like, all right, I know these characters. So I'll watch these guys over the Marvel characters. They have free reign. They can establish each character and create the underlining story. Let Darkseid build up because he is Darkseid. He is supposed to be the guy that comes to destroy your planet and bring the apocalypse. Yeah. So I just, I think the people at Warner brothers have no clue what the hell they're doing. We'll see. I'm hoping with this new brain trust of people in charge of the whole DC extended universe, 
including Josh Whedon. Uh, I can't remember her name, but the uh, woman that directed Wonder Woman and uh, the, the head creative writer of DC Comic Books, all part of this brain trust now. Okay. I'm hoping that they can kind of write the ship. I hope they can too because – I mean, it, it it seems to be heading in a direct a right direction with Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman that was is, a fantastic movie. It's the one. It, there's there is some criticism I have of it with the final battle being a bit dark, and did we really have to have the guy's mustache popping out of his helmet at us at the end? Like <laughs> he looks so cool in that plate <laughs> armor that he made, and then he drags his like fingers and melts the plate. and we get to see his face, and it looks the exact same. He couldn't turn into like some kind of demon or something. It would have been way cooler. Come on. But, I mean, it's just small stuff like that. I can't believe Professor Lupin. <laughs> Lupin, <laughs> no. But, yeah, I mean. I, that, was, that, was, that threw me for a loop. Yeah. <laughs> when he when he, he was Aries. Spoiler I, I alert. guessed it early in the in the movie. And then I was like, nah, it's not him. And nah. then it was him. And I was like, shit. <laughs> <laughs> and so, just for the most part, I mean, Wonder Woman was a good movie. I it was the shining hope small criticisms but other than that I mean it did a good job bringing humor back to the DC universe so it wasn't so dark yeah you know if I want to see a dark movie I'm gonna go see the new Batman which supposedly is gonna be more of a noir or noir noir, noir. I yeah I can't noir. even pronounce it but it's gonna be more detectivey and I I like that idea ooh and if that's the case maybe we'll get to see that side of Batman which we haven't seen no. Like, if I can see Ben Affleck being a detective and then just being a gritty old man Batman that just wants to break every limb in your body, sign me up. Because <laughs> <laughs> that movie, let that one be dark. Yes. And introduce us to a new character. You know, don't give us the same ones like Joker, Penguin. Shows like Victor Sass. They were talking about Deathstroke. Deathstroke would be cool. I would be. I would love to see Deathstroke on the big screen. I mean, he's already actually been cast. Um, Joel Magnolia. I think I saw that, yeah. But uh, like I think Victor Saz would be a really cool one to introduce. Just he's not known; he's just a serial killer. Mm -hmm. If it's a detective movie, makes sense. Yeah, that's your guy. You can introduce other side characters in, like Calendar Man. You know, these yeah. people that don't really get spotlight from Batman. It's just Joker. How would you like? Oh, back to the Flashpoint. <laughs> How would you like to see J Jeffrey Dean Morgan as Batman? I would, <laughs> if if that is the case when it, like if they do a Flashpoint movie and they show Jeffrey Dean Morgan as Batman and then they show Maggie as Joker, dude, I will love yeah. it. Yeah. I will oh, man. love it. I already love Jeffrey Dean Morgan. I I loved him before fucking he was Negan. I did too cuz I loved him as a comedian. Yeah. I loved him as a comedian in Watchmen. And then when you watch The Walking Dead and he's Negan, you're like, oh, my God, he's the comedian. Yeah. He plays the exact same character as the comedian, except that it's in zombie worlds. And, I mean, I'm not a huge zombie fan, but I, I hate love zombies. The Walking Dead, man. I love The Walking Dead. I hate zombies, but I yep. love The Walking Dead. Dude, Rick Grimes is so cool. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's – I just, It'll be so fucking cool to see him as Batman. Yeah. God especially, damn it. Especially if they do the costume right, where it's like, you know, the red. The red, yeah. They do the red eyes, you know, the red thing, and he's just, he's a Batman, no prisoner, kill you. He will play it amazing. And that's what I'm, I just hope DC does this stuff right. Like, I don't understand why some of these companies don't hire their fans to write their material for them, you know? Like, we know what's best. <laughs> yeah, like, we know the characters. Like, it can't be any worse than what you're giving us. No, like, it can't be. <laughs> we've seen the reviews for Batman v Superman, Suicide Squad. Like, for Warner Brothers, the, Warner Brothers actually predicted that Wonder Woman was going to be a bust. They thought it was terrible. And it turned out to be, made like $820 million worldwide. That's ridiculous. Like, you think that movie is a bust? It was the best one by far. Yeah. So, I mean, hopefully, like I said, Ju Justice League with Joss Whedon at the helm kind of starts to right the ship. I don't think it's going to be perfect. No. Because I'll be honest, Jason Momoa, I love him as Aquaman. I'm not digging this whole surfer dude thing with I him. I don't either. Aquaman's supposed to be a pretty serious guy that, like, 
he doesn't like to joke around. He mm-hmm. he likes to handle business. Like from the original trailers where he's kind of like this this loner guy that's like this comes into shore every now and then. Like, that's cool. I liked that. And then all of a sudden he's like this fucking dude. Oh, this, he's like this fucking thrill, like this adrenaline junk and yeah. junkie fucking flying through the air and shit. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it does, the, I, I, I know for a fact I'm going to hate that unless it's just weird for the trailer. But if, if that's, if it's like that in the actual movie where he, he lands on the fucking Batmobile and you're like, yeah, like it, the voice just doesn't match up with what's going on to no. me. And I hate that. I absolutely hate that. Like the one thing I feel like DC really struggled with is visuals. They, the things don't look practical. No. And I understand that. I mean, they're using CGI to make these like aliens appear, you know, from apocalypse. But I mean, Marvel did it in Avengers in 2012 and it looked way better. Yeah. Like the CGI is not good. So I'm just, I'm hoping, hoping it's better than what I'm anticipating it's going to be. Maybe my, my low expectations will help. I mean, it helped with mm-hmm. Power Rangers. Power Rangers was pretty good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I had low expectations for Power Rangers. Uh, same. And then when I went and watched it, I had a blast. Mm-hmm. Like, it was one of the best times I've had in a theater for a while, just because of the nostalgia feel. I liked the little backstories they gave the characters. Yeah. And, I mean, I, I know I'm in kind of a minority with this, where, like, people... People didn't really like the change in characters as far as like, you know, some of their backstories and how they interacted with each other. But I, I don't know. I did. I thought it was a fun I time. I dug it. Yeah. It gave each character a little bit more motivation for what they do. And then, you know, the, the kid that played Billy, mm-hmm. he was the he was the best part of that movie. But I went He's into the it expecting character. him to He's be the, easily the deepest character. Yeah. So I just I. I'm hoping that it's the same with Justice League, though. My low expectations are going to help me out when it comes to how good the movie's going to be to me. Speaking of low expectations. Have you talked to my ex-girlfriend lately? <laughs> <laughs> no. What do you think of it? Have you seen the new Star Wars trailer? I have, and uh, that's about <laughs> are, the opposite of low expectations. I know. I just I want, I wanted to be sarcastic. Um, I'm excited. I... I'm nervous. I haven't seen Rogue One yet, though. But you don't need to. I know. I know it's it's a kind of in between movie. I'll be honest. I was really hoping they do something with like Force Unleashed as an in between movie. That would be cool. watch Rogue One. Yeah, I hear Rogue One's telling good. you watch it. It it makes it makes you appreciate A New Hope so much more. Yeah, I mean, the old, I remember watching Star Wars the first time, and I was watching A New Hope, and I wasn't a huge fan. Yeah. As older I as the older I get, I watch a new hope and I'm like, you know what, this is actually pretty good. And the older I get, the more I appreciate Empire. <laughs> yeah. Same here. Like I I love Empire. But... I appreciate the original trilogy more the older I get. Cause I remember when I watched them the first time, I was like, these suck. And I was like, <laughs> Phantom Menace is so cool because Darth Maul. You know? See, I watched the originals before the prequels, obviously. Yeah. See, I did too, but I just I didn't like them. I liked them, and then I. But I, I, I was drawn more to the colorfulness of the the new ones. Yeah, the, I wa- I watched the prequels. The modernness. Like, yeah, of dude, them. Darth Maul so cool. Yeah, you Darth know? Maul. Was... Pod racing that was like the coolest thing ever, and then now I watch episode one, and I'm like, oh my gosh, <laughs> it's so bad, and then you see like episode two, Attack of the Clones. And it's I think like it's so the worst boring. Of the worst of the trilogy. Yeah, and then Revenge of the Sith is pretty good. Yeah, I think episode three is pretty good. Granted, they Anakin's still kind of a whiny little bitch. I don't even blame Hayden Christensen for that. I don't either. I, I blame, blame the poor writing. Yeah, I blame George Lucas. He's he's not good with dialogue. He created a spectacular universe, but he is bad with character development and dialogue. Yeah. I mean, Ian McGregor, great actor. Yeah. Just listen to some of the lines he has to deliver in that Star Wars Episode Three. Not good. Hello there. Like where he like <laughs> he's talking to Padme about Anakin killing the kids, mm-hmm. and he's like Anakin killed younglings, and it makes you laugh. Yeah, you should not be laughing at Anakin murdering like fifty children. Have you seen that video? It's it's of it, and it, the <laughs> fucking bow goes down there, and fucking <laughs> Obi Wan pops up out of the drain. And goes 
hello there. <laughs> and again, the kid, the kid is, it's uh, General Grievous, is like, General Kenobi. <laughs> it's like, God damn it. <laughs> that is fantastic. Oh, I have not the, seen that video. The internet's, the internet's amazing. It is a good, it's a good place. <laughs> no, okay, but watch Rogue One because they did such a good job of not trying to overdo themselves, like set things, like, like make things how you, if you had the technology now, back then when we made Star Wars, mm -hmm. they they do a really good job of keeping it technology then. Practical. Practical. Cool. And the story flows so well. It, it's, it jumps around a lot in the very beginning, mm -hmm. and it, it's going to be hard to follow, but... It, once it once you get in the sh and once you get in the shit, you'll love it. I mean, I've heard good things, and I mean, when I looked, I watched Force Awakens. I liked it, and I was like, "This is exactly like a New Hope." Mm -hmm. You know, there's just new characters placing spots of the old characters, and the old characters are now filling in different roles or creating new roles for themselves. Like Han Solo. Han yeah. Solo was in a completely new role, whereas like. Poe kind of took over the Han Solo role. Yeah. And, you know, that's cool. I'm all right with that. Um, with Last Jedi, though, I'm nervous where they're going to take the storyline. I am, too. But I'm not nervous. I'm I'm interested. I, I, I guess nervous isn't the right word. I guess anxious. Yeah. Because uh, I, I have a lot of questions about Snoke. <laughs> I think we all do. And then, like, Ray, Like, Ray's past. Like, Kylo is a Skywalker. Skywalkers are force sensitive by nature. And Ray just beat the living shit out of him with no training at all. Yeah. Like all of a sudden she's able to pull a lightsaber clear across a forest and just out duel him while a trained trained trooper and Finn could not do anything against yeah. Kylo. So it's like, what is Rey? Is what she, is Rey? Is she, you know, there, there's a rumor that she's a Kenobi. There's a rumor that she is the Chosen One. That whenever there is an imbalance in the Force, the Force creates a Chosen One. There's that theory also. That she is basically an Anakin. There's also a rumor that she is a Skywalker. Yeah. That she's actually Kylo's like twin sister or something. I don't know. See, I don't, I don't see it working I, like that. I don't buy it. I don't really buy any of them. I don't really honestly want her to be the chosen one. But I want some kind of explanation of how all of a sudden she knew she had Jedi mind tricks. You know? Well, they, they kind of explained it in the movie. So like, she's, she's figuring out that her power as she goes. And but it literally happened like that. It did. It happened a little quickly. So I agree. There's just a lot of questions, and then Snoke was in the movie for a little bit. And you're just like, who's Snoke? Mm -hmm. And like, I mean, I've seen. There's YouTube. a lot of mystery. Yeah, a lot him. of people are like, oh, he's Mace Windu. Shut the fuck up. Yeah, like, <laughs> did you see the one I posted the other day where the, the 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 there's that famous that famous scene from A New Hope where the stormtroopers are walking in the Death Star, and then one hits his head, yeah. and, you, and it's just in the background. You don't really notice it unless. Unless someone shows you. Yeah, it was actually a, a mishap. The guy could yeah, see out exactly. the helmet. Yeah, exactly. And then George and Lucas someone, just added the sound effect and later. Someone took a pic. Like, they took a picture of Snoke and then they put that picture of that below it. And it said. Like, <laughs> God damn it. Like, look at the cut. It's the stormtrooper. That's Snoke. I was like, this is this is the best theory yet. Best theory yet. Dude, the best Star Wars theory is the Jar Jar Binks theory. Oh my. That's the most well thought out one. It yeah. is. And honestly, like, I know it's just bad editing. That like some of these things, mm -hmm. but like, if that turned out to be true, you know how happy that would make me. Like, Jar Jar was the most one of the most annoying characters in cinema history, mm -hmm. and if you found out he was actually the reason behind everything, there was a reason why he was so annoying. There's a reason why he sucks at fighting. Like, it would be amazing. Like. I, what if that was the original plan? But he just was such a hated character that Lucas was like, "We got to get the fuck out of this guy." <laughs> like that would have been spectacular. So I don't know. That's the best. That's the best Star Wars theory to me. I think it'd be cool if somehow you know Snoke is like Plagueis. I don't like that. You don't. I don't like that. I think it'd be kind of cool. People were talking about Kylo Ren being Darth Revan. 
I'm like, nah, no, I, like that. I didn't like that from the beginning. What if it's like, you know, Sidious uh, reincarnated as I like Snoke? That. I don't really I like, like that. it. <laughs> I want it to be kind of a new character. I do too. I don't, I don't but like But I want to know where the hell anybody. he came from because, I mean. There's some theories out there. Uh, was he one of Darth Vader's secret apprentices? I don't know. Who knows if that's canon anymore? Yeah. Well, all the old Republic stuff is canon still. So maybe this is like an old Sith that has been around. That's one of the theories. For like a they, millennium. Somebody, I can't remember. Um, they talked about it on Journey into the Comics a couple weeks ago but they because t- they were talking about Snoke. And they are saying maybe Snoke is like um, whatever, like their initials. Yeah. S- every, every letter st- Sith no one ever knew about. Sith, no one knew ever. I think that's I can't I can't remember what the E was. It's, but, it's an acronym. <laughs> yeah, it's an acronym, and um, I thought that was really fucking interesting. What if he was? What if he was the Sith from back in the the old Republic? That'd be cool. Like way before, like before, like by, like around Revan's time. That'd yeah. be fucking awesome. And yeah. he's just sat in the background this whole fucking time. Like it'll be amazing. Like, but I want him to be a new character. But I need explanations. Yeah, and I I hope that they give us that. Mm-hmm. Um, the the I think the director came out before the trailer came out. He said, "Hey, if you want to go into this movie clean, don't watch this trailer because it's potentially spoilery." He he warned everybody, and I was like, "Oh man, now I don't want to watch the trailer." <laughs> but of course, it comes up on my feed, and I'm like, "Okay, I'm, I'm gonna, gonna watch, it. watch the trailer." <laughs> So I watch it, and you know, I I could definitely see how a lot of things could be potentially spoilery in that uh, trailer, but I also think that trailers tend to mislead and throw people exactly. off. Exactly. So I think there's a there's a lot of things in there that were edited to make us think things. Like I want to know why Luke is on this island. I want to know. Well, supposedly it's where the Jedi originate. Exactly. Like that's what I understand. But why is he exiled himself on there? Like, what happened to all the Jedi he was trying to teach? Did Kylo fucking murder them? I think them? Kylo either murdered them or he took them for himself. And then, like, if this happened, why didn't Luke stop Snoke? Like, because Luke, you know, according to every other thing, he's the new Grand Master. He is quite possibly one of the most powerful Jedi ever. So could he not handle Snoke? If that's the case... What the hell is Ray supposed to do against yeah, him? Yeah, right. So, and then it's like, you know, the title is The Last Jedi. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, you know, Star Wars, their their titles are pretty... Pretty direct. Know, pretty direct. You know, you have Star Wars Episode Four, New Hope, Luke. He's the he's a new hope for the Rebels. Or the, the fact that they got the plans for the Death Star. That's yeah. the new hope. Or, but yeah, you're right. Yeah. And then you have The Empire Strikes Back. The Empire Struck Back? Yeah. <laughs> they, they messed up Hoth. You know, there goes freaking Leia being captured and sent to Jabba. Mm-hmm. Luke got his hand cut off. And, you know, Han is in Carbonite. And then you had Return of the Jedi. You know, technically, Luke finally became a Jedi. Don't know how. <laughs> but somehow did. Yeah. Doesn't really explain the timeline very well. In Not really, movies. no. Then you have episode one of Phantom Menace. Everyone's like, oh, Darth Maul. But no, it's actually Sidious. Attack of the clones. Clones yeah. attacked the droids. And then you have Revenge of the Sith. The Revenge of been plotting an attack on the Jedi for years. They finally did, they did it. it. It's a thousand year plot. And, and they, so they finally took it out. You have the Force Awakens. Rey found her Force abilities. Yeah. This one's called The Last Jedi. Who's dying? See, I don't... See, Jedi can be taken plural too. Yeah, Make, and you, and you hear in the original teaser, Luke say the Jedi, I, the Jedi have to end. Yeah. So maybe he's saying he's putting an end to the Jedi and the Sith. He's just because he's a great Jedi. Yeah. He is a great Jedi through and through. He's not an official Jedi, mm-hmm. and so I think he's saying basically this whole light and dark side thing it needs to end. Because as long as there's Jedi, there's always going to be Sith. And as long as there's Sith, there's always going to be Jedi. As long as there's light, there's always dark. But there's not the Sith right now. Yeah. Like, Kylo Ren's not a Sith. Mm-mm. Snoke we might don't not know be what a he Sith. Is. Yeah. Sith. <laughs> but, uh, I don't know. I look at, like, The Last Jedi. It's like, what does that mean? They can't kill Luke because they killed Han. Yeah. 
I don't think they're going to kill Luke. And I mean, honestly, Carrie Fisher passed away in real life. So she has, they have to find a, an exit strategy for her. Yeah. So, I mean, if you kill Luke in this one, I mean, I could possibly see it in episode nine. Yeah. But if you kill him in this one, I feel like that's going to make a lot of fans not happy. Yeah. I mean, a lot of fans were already not happy about Han Solo, but... It was his time, and he it wanted was a, it. He wanted it in episode... Uh, he, he wanted went, it in episode six. Yeah, he wanted he wanted it to give his character uh, a, a hero's death. End. Yeah. And, and, I mean, I think that they did a good job killing him off in episode seven. I thought it was mm-hmm. a good, good little plot twist, because, like, you saw that, like... Adam Driver, great job. Awesome, yeah. Great job. You saw the conflict in his character and, like, having to kill... Oh, I hated that people complained about his character so much. He was a little whiny bitch. That's what the Sith are. <laughs> like, but, like, his he was so good. Mm-hmm. He was fantastic. But, yeah, I'm, I'm nervous about Star Wars. I'm going to go see it, though. Oh, obviously. yeah, of course. If I don't go see it, then I'll shoot myself. I'm excited that J.J. Abrams is back on board mm-hmm. for Nine. J.J. Abrams is a fantastic director. He is. I love the Star Trek movies. The third one wasn't that good, but that's because he wasn't at the helm. Star, Star Trek Beyond? Yep. It was okay. <laughs> it was okay, but it wasn't... The... It, it was more character-driven. Yeah. There's a lot of... It was, it was a lot of character... To me, Into Darkness is the best one. Oh, definitely. Into Darkness was Con! absolutely fantastic. <laughs> like... Oh, my God. I love Star Trek Into Darkness, and then, like, J.J. Abrams did a really good job of Force Awakens, and I'm happy he's back on board with Episode Nine because I'm... I'm hoping that he can bring it to a close with more lens flares. <laughs> oh, yeah. All them lens flares. He's going to tie it into Lost. You know that, right? Oh, God. <laughs> and they're back on the island. He's going to, someone's going to get on a plane at the very end and he's going to be like, I have a bad feeling about this flight. <laughs> <laughs> ah, shit, man. Man, we've been going for a while. Yep. I'm pretty sure Kristen's <sighs> texting me. Oh, my God. Yeah. Well, is there is there anything you'd like to add? I mean, no, I'm just going to plug my channel again. Do it. Um, so go to YouTube.com, look up a Nader's M. That's without the V. And like and subscribe. Watch my videos. Comment on them. Tell me what you want to see because I, mean, I need some ideas for content. I'll do my best to give you guys what you want because I'm a pretty open guy. I'm willing to do whatever. <laughs> I have links to my Facebook page and my Twitter. I'm going to try to start live streaming on Twitch also. So keep an eye out for that. But yeah, go to go to that page. Give me a like, subscribe, notification is whatever you want to do. Just watch them. I'll, I'll be eternally grateful. Yeah. But that's an Aders M. An Aders M. An Aders M. No V. No V. Well... As always, you can uh, check me out on my Facebook page or Instagram. Facebook is just facebook.com slash podcastrophy. Instagram is pod, at podcastrophy podcast. Uh, I have Twitter as well, same same handle, but I don't care. I don't use it. <laughs> uh, you can tweet at me, and I will if I, if I get tweets, cool, I'll use it, but I don't get tweets, so I don't use it. Um, but yeah, you check us out on the Journey into Comics Network. You can subscribe to us on iTunes, Podbean, Stitcher Radio, uh, several other things. <laughs> uh, we recently started doing a uh, uh, a new thing called the Best of the Best of uh, the the Network thing. I can't remember exactly what it's called. Journey into Comics Best of Week, and every Saturday it airs, and it takes uh, segments from each uh, each podcast that uh, aired that week. And it's just it's just a highlight reel, and it's really awesome. Um, if you if you're not necessarily wanting to listen to an entire podcast that you haven't listened to yet of like one of the other shows, that's a good spot. That's a good place to fucking go in, listen, see if you like it, and if you like it, go check out the other podcast. You can you can find all kinds of podcasts on the Journey into Comics Network. Every day of the week, we have a, a new episode of a podcast. Hot damn! Uh, we have Journey into Comics, Journey into Wrestling. Game Addicts podcast, Butt Stuff podcast, The Poor Report. Um, That's the one I need. Let me. I'm. I'm. See, I'm so unprofessional because <laughs> I can just, and I'm okay with that. So I can just go in here and uh, check out all the podcasts, see if I'm missing anything. 
All right, gonna run down it again. Journey into comics, booties watching movies, journey into wrestling, podcastrophe, the one you're listening to right now, the voice of survival podcast, the poor report, butt stuff, and game addicts. Check all of those out. Game addicts is a separate feed, you'll have to subscribe to them separately. But if you subscribe to Journey into comics, you get all of the others. And let me tell you, they are all fantastic. I love podcasting for this network. I love the people in this network. We are an awesome family of podcasters, and I love it. So, without further ado, thank you all for listening. Matt, thank you for joining me. Thanks for having me. I look forward to coming back maybe one day. I do, too. I enjoy. I, I look forward to having you back. Hopefully, Felipe, we can, hopefully we can get Felipe. Felipe I want Felipe too. on here because I want all of you guys to understand the charisma that exudes from this guy yes he will control this podcast <laughs> and that's okay that's okay because all i want this podcast to be is just a conversation and for people to get to know the people in my life yep. and for me to get to know people that might not be in my life and have them on and get to know people better but it's just a conversation it's just shooting the shit and just talking about whatever comes up and i I have so much fun doing this. I had a blast, man. I had a awesome. I had a great time. Like I said, I, I cannot wait to come back. Oh yeah, and you will be, you will be, dope. Ho- hopefully with more people because it that's where this this podcast really shines when we have three or four people. Yeah, on. man. I mean, just shoot me when I'll try to come of down. <laughs> I can even come up there. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I got I'm not sp- opposed. I got space. <laughs> Hell yeah, man. All right, well that is all. Thank you all for listening again, and. Try to make every day a big dick day. Bye, guys. Nice outro. Woke up this morning With my dick in my hand Girl, he's to the right of me Just like I planned It's gonna be a Big dick day, gonna be a big dick day.